But it is a big inter intra county rivalry kind of game, and uh, it should be an exciting night. Good crowd here, crisp, cool, breezy night. But hey, it's great, great to play baseball. Yeah, Gary, excited to be here with you. Uh, two very storied baseball programs. Bradley, of course, uh, Coach Adams, uh, and the, the crew that he's got over there. Uh, very consistent. One thing we were talking about before we came on air is just, you know, each year a lot of people talk about, well, Bradley lost this, Bradley lost that. There's one thing you can go ahead and guarantee. It's that every single year Travis Adams is going to put a competitive baseball team on the field, uh, along with Walker Valley on the other side of things, coming off of a state tournament appearance last year, losing a few guys off that team. Uh, they're trying to get some things to go their way just just being frank uh ha had some tough losses up to this point but uh we'll dive into all that stuff here in a little bit but as you said it's going to be a little chilly tonight a little cold uh we were joking around what was colder the state <laughs> semifinal football games for bradley and walker valley this year or tonight's baseball game well you're you're right there it is it is springtime but you know mother nature sometimes has a fickle way of uh, Making you remember that she's in charge of everything. And, Absolutely. And of course, it'll warm up, and this is just one of the a games. We're going to have another game at Walker Valley on the 26th, I believe it will be. Bradley yes. going that way. We'll have that broadcast for you there. So should be fun, and we'll just see what develops throughout the year. But right now, the teams both had warm-ups. The Bears take it first because they're going to be in the field first, and Walker Valley just had their warm-ups. And uh, right now, Coach Adams is down here to talk to the home plate umpire and the field umpire. And Coach Anderson is coming out, and they're going to change the lineups. And we'll have the first pitcher coming up shortly. But uh, the Bears coming in on a roll. They won nine of the last ten. They had a tough start in Florida. Went 0-5 down there. Uh, I think they lost to Boyd Buchanan here, then lost four in a row there. Since then, nine out of ten they've won. They've won the last seven in a row. And they have really pounding out some hits. Uh, they, they had a three-game sweep of Howard this week. And, and Howard's in a rebuilding mode. We all know that. Yeah. But they won't have a district game for Bradley since they're in District 6 now and Walker's in District 5. But tell us about the games that Cleveland had with Walker this week. Yeah, too. specifically those games. This is kind of an emotional game for Walker Valley and Coach Anderson's uh, ball club because you're coming off of a three-game series with Cleveland where you really feel like – you could have swept the series potentially. Instead, you, you take one game out of three. Yeah. And uh, both of those games that they lost, lost by a run. Uh, last night, a very unfortunate drop ball, which, uh, you know, it happens. These young men, they get out here and uh, they, they pour their hearts and soul and, and time onto this diamond. And mm -hmm. things don't always go your way. Uh, the biggest thing is with Coach Anderson, I spoke with him today, it's getting the guys to say, hey, that stuff happens. we got to forget about it and move on. Got another big game tonight. So, uh, of of course, uh, emotional games when you're playing Cleveland, mm -hmm. when you're playing Bradley. Uh, it's just a matter of getting these young men to, to refocus and say, you know what, the past is a past. Let's go ahead and control what we can control. The old snap and clear mentality. You know, you, can't, you, you dwell on it, it's going to cause you more problems. So you got to forget about it, move on. And so every day's a different day. And but baseball is one of those games you can – come out here and look like a million dollars and have a shutout and win a big game, and then you turn around the next day and just get shut out yourself yeah. by the same team. You know, it's just crazy how baseball goes. That's that's why people love baseball so much, and we're both big baseball fans, I know, and uh, it's good to get out here on a, and see the high school kids play. One of the things you mentioned, you know, you, sometimes you have a drop ball, and sometimes we forget these are high school kids. Absolutely. Uh, they're not got that the maturity, you know, mentally sometimes or physically that they want to have, and they want to have it right now, but uh, it's, it's tough sometimes on those. And, it's tough on the parents sitting in the stands. Oh, yeah, no, no doubt about that. Probably tougher on them than anybody. And, and, and knowing, obviously, uh, Coach Anderson and, and Travis Adams very well personally, I know both those guys have their teams prepared. Mm -hmm. They have their teams working. They do a great job as coaches. Their staffs are phenomenal coaching staff. So, uh, it's going to come together uh, for both of these teams. And uh, – they're, they're going to be competitive as we get closer to the postseason. And uh, I know, speaking on the Mustang behalf, uh, we're, we're hoping to get some momentum changing a little bit uh, with, with kind of how the first part of this season has went. Well, it's, it's like we saw last year, the, the Atlanta Braves, best team in baseball, bar none. Doesn't matter what you've done in regular nope. season. It, it matters, but it matters who gets hot in the postseason like the Phillies did and knocked us the out. The year they and, uh, won the World Series, only yeah. won 88 games. Yeah. So, and look you're at that, absolutely so. right. Went over 100 last year, and where they yeah. end up, they don't even get out of the division playoffs. There, and and so. to your point a minute ago, this is a game where when you fell seven out of ten times, you're still considered successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. really, you really, really are. Yeah. But that sort of sets the scene for where we're at here at Brady Central tonight. The introduction of starting lamps coming up 
right now with Walker Bell. And I tell you what, let's take a break and let's come back. We'll go through the lineups for both teams. Perfect. We'll return here. We're on MixTV.TV. I didn't even mention that. Brought to you as always by Wholesale Supply, our great sponsors, Josh and the guys down there do a great job. We appreciate them ever so much for all the uh, support they give all of our local schools in the county and all the great things through Wholesale Supply Group. Let's take that break as we promised. We'll be back with the starting laps when we return here, here on MixTV.TV. When most people think of plumbing and electrical supply houses, there's an idea that they're just for plumbers or electricians or builders to shop at. Wholesale Supply is proud to be open to the public and proud to serve our communities. By supplying the best quality products for the best prices with the best service guaranteed, Wholesale Supply is your one-stop shop for everything plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. To find a location near you, visit WholesaleSupply.us for more. Helping build communities in the Southeast for over 80 years is just what we do. This is John Davis, the trade-in man for Kia Cleveland on South Lee Highway, and we will overpay for your old car today. High mileage, cosmetic issues, that's okay. Rusted, busted, can't be trusted, all trade-ins are welcome. Just bring us your old car as is. Don't even wash it. You'll be shocked of how much I'm willing to pay for your old car in any condition. Come see me, John Davis, the trade-in man for Kia Cleveland on South Lee Highway in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee, where selling your car is as easy as one, two, three. Back here at Brad Central, the starting lines are being introduced. We'll run through those for, for you in just a moment but because we're about to have the national anthem here from Brad Central. We'll keep it here live for you to listen to that. Good crowd here tonight, Andy, and uh, here on MixTV.TV. Glad to have you folks joining in. Pass the word, you know. Uh, MixTV.TV, available worldwide. Download that My Mix app, My Mix 104 app. It's totally free, and you can watch this free of charge and listen to the audio here that you're seeing. We got, um, I think, five different cameras here tonight to cover all the action. We'll have some replays and things for you throughout the game. Yeah, the guys down there in the truck, they do a great job getting in down there and they're nerded. Old they're Fruit Loops down there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Here's our national anthem right now. There's our country's national anthem before a nice crowd here at Toby McKenzie Baseball Club Complex. As we mentioned earlier, we'll be at Walker Valley on the 26th of April for the uh, follow-up game where the Bears will be the visiting team and Walker Valley will be the host. But let's run through the starting laps first for the Mustangs of Walker Valley there, Andy. Yeah, the Mustangs wearing their baby blue tops, gold numbers tonight, valley across the chest, white pants. Leading off for the Mustangs playing second base number 11, Carson Minix. Batting second, center fielder number 16, Braxton Smith. Batting third, the shortstop number nine, Felipe Castellanos. Hitting cleanup, right fielder number one, Connor Phillips. Fifth, first baseman, Keller Stansel. Sixth, the designated hitter, Michael Pledge. Seventh, third baseman, Satchel Cole. Eighth, left fielder, Hayden Harrison. And catching and batting ninth, number six, Jordan Smith. And on the bump for the Mustangs tonight, number 25, Cooper Cantrell. The Bears will line up like this, leading off. And on the mound, the lefty going to Lee University, Alex Brew. He wears number 17. He'll be starting. And I believe talking to the coaches today, they're going to have uh, three or four pitchers go tonight. Batting second and playing second, number one, Jackson Humble. Batting third, the DH, number eight, Spain Bristol. He'll be DH for the catcher. Number nine, Colby Stott. Hitting cleanup, the big guy, Luke Keith, the big football player. He's going to UTC play football down there. He is big. Yes, he is big. He's <laughs> playing third tonight. And then we'll have Josh Leak, who is bound for Bryan University to play baseball. He'll be playing first, and he's another big kid. He wears number 28. 
Batting six, going to Cleveland State to play baseball. The shortstop, number 23, Hank Adams. Tegan Castle will play right field, hit seventh. He wears number six for the Bears. Jonathan Alomar being center field, hitting eighth. He's number 13. And Tito Williams, who's bound for Northwestern on a football scholarship. The old Brainiac, I call him, 4.0 GPA, folks. He wears number three, and he plays left field for the Bears, and he'll hit ninth for the Bears. And that's how they line up for both teams. We're getting ready for the first pitches. Brew, I believe, is about ready to uh, have it thrown down to second, and we'll kick off the first pitch, and there is the throw down by the catcher, Kobe Stott. And here comes the leadoff man. It's going to be Carson Minix, the shortstop, number 11. The Carson Minix batting 356 so far this season, 16 hits. That's who you want leading off with, yep. with Lead, an average like that. Yeah, leading the team in RBIs with nine. First pitch swung on, a ground ball to first base. And it's going to be bobbled, picked up, and underhand to the pitcher for out number one. So one up, one down. Yeah, being aggressive there, first pitch of the game, going after that one, Minix. And uh, Braxton Smith here now up for the Mustangs is a Carson Newman commit. Also a good football player for the Mustangs past few years here. Another right, excuse me, another right hand hitter playing center field. And Brew typically around the, and there's a ball there. Typically around the plate, so I guess you take pay to your advantage to uh, not take too many looking strikes. The 1 0 pitch on its way, fast ball, ground in left field for a base hit. Our first hit of the game off the bat of Braxton Smith. Yeah, Braxton, he's kind of been back and forth between that leadoff position and that two hole. And uh, you see why right there, just a very patient hitter. Uh, I believe Braxton leads the team in walks, as a matter of fact. He, yeah, he does with 13. So uh, now, uh, Felipe Castellanos, shortstop. This, it seems like he's been at Walker Valley for about five years. So he's a. <laughs> Season one red shirt, uh, yeah, that's fifth it, year, that's it. COVID, COVID, COVID year. <laughs> but, yeah, Felipe, take, great kid. Take the first pitch for a ball. So we kind of lead that uh, Braxton gets off of first base. A short lead right now, a couple of steps. He's stretched out there a little bit more. The look over by the left. He's tough, still on left-handed pitcher. It'll be a call strike. Evens of count at one and one. By the way, how about them Braves, man? I tell you what, home opener tonight, too. <laughs> yeah, yes, it is, with the Diamondbacks, I believe. Yep. Which hard to believe, Diamondbacks, the uh, returning National League champions. <laughs> yes. Unbelievable. Makes a lot of us disgusted. Yep. The throw to first, he's back standing. 1-1 one, one count, one out and one on right here in top of the first from Bradley St. Last game on MixTV.TV. Join us. Check it out on your computer, your phone, your laptop, whatever you got. See live coverage here. And here's a high fly ball to center field. Looks like it, we've got a beat on him, maybe, and it will be out number two there. And in our center, center field tonight for the Bears is Jonathan Alomar. Two out. Two away brings the cleanup man. Let's see what stats are on him. Yeah, Connor that, Phillips. That's number one, Connor Phillips. And I, I, I could sit here and talk about Connor Phillips quite a bit. Uh, another kid who's a leader on the football field as well. Mate, was pretty uh, – Chaotic player off the defensive end position for the Mustangs this year, but Connor Phillips has uh, got 14 hits for the Mustangs and really last year kind of made his presence known on the mound for the Mustangs coming in in relief. And this year he's he's transitioned more to a starting role. Uh, but tonight, Connor playing right field. Big left-handed hitter. Stout yeah. kid. Yeah, can't, can't miss that hair either. No. That long bleach blonde hair. I used to do mine that way. <laughs> <laughs> You see what happens too, don't you? That's it. He'll That's take it. a call strike one on the first pitch. Oh, and we count. Two out now. Still at first base, Braxton Smith. Led with a single. Yeah, it's been pretty cool to watch Brew's maturity and just over the years from being watching him as a middle school player to seeing him pitch now. Runner going. He'll take it standing up as a pitch was bobbled by the catcher that time. So it'll be a ball one, strike one count with running out second base. Which with a stolen base. Rightfully so. You know, it has the lineage for it. 1-1 <laughs> one, one count now with two away. But just so so much patience for Brew. Just calm, cool, collected. Yeah. And here's a shot into left field for another base hit. Let's see if they send him. Nah, they're going to hold him at third. Wasn't too deeply hit, so they will hold him at third. Second, first, uh, second base hit of the night, so it runs at first and third now. For the Mustangs. Yeah, this is going to bring up number three first baseman Keller Stansel for Walker Valley. 
Keller. He's hitting in the five hole with the runners on the corner, but there are two away now. Yeah, Keller hitting 282 on this young season. Kobe Stott steps out in front of the plate to give the infielders the call. Let's see the runner, the uh, first and third baseman are going to be playing pretty close. Short and second are back deep. Rue taking a look to third base. He slows down uh, things whenever there are uh, runners on. Of course, a lot of pitchers will do that. Yeah. He'll, first pitch is ball one outside. But going back to what I was saying about Brew, even in middle school, you could just see the maturity on the mound well beyond his years. And obviously he's made that transition well to the high school game and is going to continue to do that in college. Yeah, I think he'll have a good career where playing for his dad at Lee University. Runner takes second, so he's running at second and third now. So a base hit could play two of them. And pitches ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Two men on, two men out. Brew checking the runners, comes home with a pitch, swung on and missed, two and one. Yeah, and that, Gary, that's something that Walker Valley, being transparent here, uh, getting runs on the board early uh, has kind of been a struggle. And, uh, you know, just, just being – having competitive at-bats is something that has improved. So, you hope to eventually see that breakthrough for this offense. Grounder to third, going to be bobble. Let's see, he's going to be safe. Going to have to give him an error on that one. So now the base is going to be loaded, and that's going to bring up Michael Pledge, I believe it is. Yeah, and ju just to kind of give you a feel for what just happened there, Stancil just hit a, a little bouncer to over there to third base, and a little, little bit of trouble handling that one for the big third baseman. But, uh, again, he limited the damage, kept the ball in front of him, so yeah. you kept the base runner at third, didn't score there. That, that's big with two outs here. So, Brew looking to knuckle down here and see, and there it hit him. So, there's the first run of the game on the hit batsman. So, give an RBI to pledge on that one the hard way. And it's quickly 1 0. Mustangs on top. That's Braxton Smith will touch on. Yeah, so, that's going to bring up the Mustang third baseman, Satchel Cole, number 27. Satchel Cole is average wise, not where he wants to be, but a kid that is completely capable of making contact at the plate. And he'll take strike one. So one run in. Mustang so far with two hits. The Bears have committed that one error. Base is still loaded here in top of the first. Bruce pitch, grounder to second. Let's see which way he'll go to second for the easy short out for out number three. So for the Mustangs, one run on two hits. There was one Bradley error and three men left on base. As we go to the bottom of the first with the Mustangs up one to nothing. We'll be back in one minute here on MixTV.TV. Hardy's Philly cheesesteak favorites are back. Handcrafted creations with sauteed peppers, onions, and melty cheese to reinvent the signature Philly classics from sunrise to supper time. Hardy's goodness in the making. Choosing the right health care plan for you and your family can be overwhelming. Direct Primary Care Associates' new pharmacy benefits is the best choice for you and your family. With personalized attention, convenient telemedicine options, and free generic medications, Direct Primary Care Associates Pharmacy Benefits offers everything you need to keep you and your family healthy and happy. Say goodbye to long wait times, rushed appointments, and unexpected medical bills. Visit our website to learn more about how Direct Primary Care Associates can provide the best health care experience for you and your family. Direct Primary Care Associates, affordable health care for all. Paula, tell us about how you came to shop at Chattanooga Auto Square. Well, I was introduced to it from my husband. He purchased his first Range Rover years ago. Then occasionally I'd start asking him if I could start driving it. I would confidently recommend them. I mean, they make you feel like family from the moment you arrive. Being in real estate for like 34 years, you really come to value and appreciate the level of service that Range Rover gives you. Chattanooga Auto Square Luxury lives here. Back here at Bradley Central High School as the Bears get ready to bat in the bottom of the first inning. And on the mound face them is going to be Cooper Cantrell. What is his record? You got his record out any chance? Yeah, Cooper Cantrell's one and two on the year. Uh, this is his fourth start. He's got 11 strikeouts, 16 walks, a 2-3-3 ERA. And uh, tell you what, he uh, got a little, little support there to go back to that uh, first half inning, Gary. That could have been a lot worse than it was. Uh, we're talking during the break. 
the, the Bradley defense, infield specifically, did a good job keeping the ball in front of them, limiting the damage there, and, and Brew kind of settled in as that inning went on. Well, he kept the ground balls on the ground and yeah. didn't get any sacrifice fly change. So had two hits to the outfield there. Yeah, that allows your defense to do their job, come yes. up behind you. If yeah. you're, you're going to give up some contact, uh, that's how you want to do it. Yeah, and don't give them free pace. It would be Brew, Humble, and Bristol leading off of the Bears here in one, two, three. And the right-handed Cantrell takes his last pitch. He'll throw down to the second base. And standing now, Alex Brew, number 17. Alex comes in today with a 417 average, 13 RBIs, and nine runs scored. And he's had 15 hits for the season. He's a lefty as he throws lefty and bats lefty. Classic look here from Coach Adams. Bears in the, the all-white uniforms, black numbers, bears across the chest. By the way, had a JV game earlier tonight. It went 6-5 to five to the Bears a couple of hours ago. First pitch is going to be a call strike right down the middle. And then on, on the other end of things, Walker Valley wearing the new look baby blue. The 0-1 pitch on his way. And check swing, but they say he went around. Or it's call strike, so it's strike two. Brew in the hole. Oh, no balls and two strikes here with Jackson Humble on deck and Spain Bristol in the hole for the Bears. Yeah, Gary, I can't help but think of the Milwaukee Brewers when I see these baby blue uniforms. Yeah, that's who they look like, yeah. yeah. The 0-2 pitch is fouled away. It'll remain at 0-2. Good crowd here on a cool night, and boy, they're bundled up with jackets and hoodies and blankets and probably <laughs> yeah, they know what's coming. Battery, right? battery operated things in there. Yeah, know. we're saying it's 51 degrees right now. We're we able to enjoy a space heater up here in the press box, so we're – we're Rest. able to tough it out a little bit easier, but yeah, tough it once out. that sun yeah. goes down, it is, it's oh, yeah. going to get chilly. One, two, the count now with the ball on that last pitch to the leadoff man for the Bears and infield. The corners are playing in tight. Here's a ground ball to short. Throw across the mound, a high throw, and it did get him. Nearly pulled him off the bag, but uh, ultimately a good throw by Castellanos. Now the second baseman, Jackson Humble, coming up. Jackson wearing number one today. And he comes in hitting 366 with 13 runs scored and 10 RBIs on the season. He's a right-handed hitter. So with one away and nobody on, Mustangs up and one nothing here at the bottom of the first. He'll take a call strike on the outside corner. Following Bradley here this year, uh, we see a lot of the umpires give him that outside pitch all game long. You don't care to give it as long as they consistently call it the same way. And it'll be a call strike, too, right down the middle that time. Yeah, consistency behind the plate is the name of the game. And that's one thing that, you know, you, you like to, to hear the fans getting into it, but you don't want them on, the, on blue too much there, especially if they're being consistent. There's a high fly ball to center field. It's going to be – Circle under and picked up for out number two. Yeah, Braxton Smith doing a good job for the Mustangs in center field. He's a, a seasoned vet out there for Walker Valley. That'll bring up the man in the DH in the three hole, number eight, Spain Bristol, DH for the catcher tonight. And he'll stand a big strapping right hander for the Bears. Let's see what Spain's done on the year here. He comes in hitting 268, and he has. Picked up a homer, 11 RBIs, and seven runs scored. And he'll take a call strike one. So Cooper Cantrell is getting ahead of all the hitters. Yeah, he's really liking that inside part of the plate, too, on these right-handed bats. The old one pitch, way outside, one and one. Gary, the best way I can describe Spain Bristol is ball player. That kid's been on a diamond since he could walk. Yeah. And uh, – I was fortunate enough I was able to coach him in wrestling for a couple of years in middle school and just a physical kid and uh, loves the game of baseball. 1-1 one, one pitch coming from Cantrell now. In the dirt, it's going to be 2-1. and one. Yeah, good block there, that one down. Uh, in, in the turf, actually, here, uh, upgrade here to, to the field at Bradley, the, the whole home plate area, artificial turf, which you see in a lot, a lot of college stadiums now. Mm -hmm. Pitching mounds of artificial yep. turf. Jordan Smith for the Mustangs doing a good job getting down and blocking that one. 2-1 count to Bristol. Cantrell winds, fires a high fly ball to center field. 
but I believe he's got a beat on it. He does for out number three for the Bears. Three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. After one completes, the Mustangs on top. One nothing here on Mix TV. TV. We'll be back with inning number two in 90 seconds. Peyton Southeastern in Cleveland is hiring case selectors. Starting pay at $19 an hour. Earning potential up to $23 an hour plus incentive pay. Additional $2 an hour night shift premium. And you're eligible to earn a $3,000 stay bonus. Flexible schedules and great benefits at Peyton Southeastern in Cleveland. They have open interviews Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 9 to 11 a.m. and from 1 to 3 p.m. Apply online at job.kroger.com to work at Peyton Southeastern in Cleveland. When most people think of plumbing and electrical supply houses, there's an idea that they're just for plumbers or electricians or builders to shop at. Wholesale Supply is proud to be open to the public and proud to serve our communities. By supplying the best quality products for the best prices with the best service guaranteed, Wholesale Supply is your one-stop shop for everything plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. To find a location near you, visit wholesalesupply.us for more helping build communities in the Southeast for over 80 years is just what we do. Welcome to Mountain View Nissan Country, where automotive excellence is our top priority. At Mountain View Nissan, we take pride in offering you the finest selection of vehicles, perfectly suited for your adventurous spirit. From powerful SUVs ready to conquer any terrain to your everyday gas-friendly commuters, we have the perfect vehicle to match your lifestyle. This is Mountain View Nissan Country, where automotive dreams become reality. Visit one of our three locations in Dalton, Chattanooga, and Cleveland today. And let us take your driving experience to new peaks. Leading off the top of the second for the Mustangs is left fielder number eight, Hayden Harrison. What's his stats look like? Yeah, Hayden Harrison, uh, been down at the bottom of the order for the Mustangs. He's pushed across five runs. Only hitting 200 right now, but he's a guy, he's very patient at the plate. He's not afraid to lay down a bunt. So, as we saw that first pitch already, he did try to lay down a bunt. George Smith to follow him. Then Carson Minks at the top of the order. We flip the scorecard, and he'll take call strike two. So, Hayden in hole, no balls and two strikes here. In the top of the second, the Mustangs up one nothing here on Mix TV. TV. Yeah, Gary, you were talking about that consistency on the outside. See that once again, Brew going to the outside part of the plate and getting that call. Good pitch. He, know, he knows his zone. One hopper right back to Brew, and he'll retire him. Out one to three, so one away here for the first out of the inning here in the bottom or top of the second with Jordan Smith, the catcher, number six, standing in. Yeah, Jordan Smith, uh, the best thing I can say to describe him is that kid is a worker. Uh, he's constantly in the batting cage, constantly, you know, blocking balls. As we talked about last half inning, he's a, he's a gritty catcher, does a great job. So with one away, nobody on base. Number nine hitter will take a pitch on the outside corner. This time it's not called a strike. And now the Bradley crowd is saying, wait a minute. You've been calling it a strike all night long. Jordan is a very patient hitter. He's got 13 walks on the season, nine hits. Brew taking a long time, a long look in for the 1-0 pitch. And it's going to be call strike one. And this year, for the first time, you can electronically send pitches to the catcher. And he wears a uh, smart Fitbit or whatever on his arm. And one pitching coach can send signals to him and only him. Like, Next what, pitch. like what they're doing in the majors here. Exactly. That's pretty neat. They've opened that up for the nationwide in high school this year. 2-1 count now on Jordan Smith, the number nine hitter. Tell you what, I'm liking these camera angles we got up here, looking at these replays and stuff. Wholesale Supply Group doing a good job taking care of us. And those cameramen are out there in the cold weather, too. So, stay warm, guys. 3-1 count on the next pitch there. Yeah, these guys know each other well, Gary, too. They grew up playing together, played together in middle school. So, kind of a cat and mouse game when you see guys that you've seen throughout your entire career. Yeah. And the next pitch is a ball, so trotting down to first base, Jordan Smith with the first walk of the night for Brew, and he'll be replaced with a courtesy runner. We'll get his number here for you in a moment. As a catcher, and a pitcher can have courtesy run number 10. Yeah, that's going to be Bryson Kent. Bryson Kent's consistently came in a run for the Mustangs this year. Done a good job. I don't have his stolen bases in front of me, but he's got a couple for so sure. He's at first with one out. Yep. We're back at the top of the order for Walker Valley. Uh, Carson Minix taking one inside there. And uh, Carson hitting 356 for the Mustangs. 16 hits on the year, nine RBIs. Retired first to the pitcher in the first inning as the leadoff here to the game. Now, time is called by the batter. He'll step out, 
step back in. He's ready to go. One oh count, one out, and one on right now. On top of the second, one nothing Mustangs. Yeah, Minnick's only a junior. He's a guy who's seen an increased workload this year from his sophomore year. 2-1 counts. He takes a call strike on that outside corner we talked about. His brother was a big part of that Walker Valley team last year that made it to the state tournament. Next pitch foul back. Two balls, two strikes to count. Good camera work by the guys here tonight. We appreciate them. This is pro-level stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Austin Chadwick, the quarterback in That's the uh, in the warm, heated, you know, control uh, room there. We we got to be good to Austin tonight. Steve gives him too hard of a time. Fly ball to center is going to be caught, and they're going to try to double off first, throw to first. Not going to be in time. He's back safely. So out number two, off the bat of Carson Minix. Good catch by the center fielder. He had to come in. It's sort of one of those hit right at. It's hard to determine the, exactly where that's going. Here's Braxton Smith, who scored the only run of the game so far as he single got on in the first inning. Yeah, and I believe that's Alan Martin, center field for Bradley, is yeah, it? Yeah, it is. He did a good job getting that ball into, making it a close play uh, back at first base. He's starting there tonight in place of Brew, who normally plays center field, but he's on the mound today. The first pitch inside, pass the catcher, and he's going to advance down to second base. I believe it's going to be a pass ball. Look catchable from here, but it's going to be ball yep. one as well. Yeah, Braxton Smith, interesting non-baseball related stat on him is he is Walker Valley's interception, all-time interception leader for the football team. Really? Yep, he sure is. Multi-sport athlete. The 1-0 pitch is high outside, 2-0. Yeah, he's a, he's the type of kid, too. you got to drag him out of the cage. Him and Jordan both are constantly putting the work in, and those are the guys that you like to see have success, and, and it's definitely coming through for those two. They've earned it. Yeah. 2-0 pitch now. Brew looks back to the runner at second, throws it home. It's going to be inside 3-0. Mentioned a little earlier, I think, that uh, Brew sometimes gets trouble getting started early in the game. It seems to settle in. And now I think they're just going to get and put him on yeah. base. Yes, they will. Be walk number two, both in this inning here. Now runs at first and second with uh, two away. Yeah, that's going to bring up Felipe Castellanos for the Mustangs. As we said earlier, Felipe is a guy who seems like he's been playing for Walker Valley for a long time just because he, he's found a way to get in that order as a youngster and does a good job in the field as well as finding his way on base. His first pitch will be – Low for a ball. He flew out to center field his first at bat back in the first. And he's heading the count right now. One ball, no strikes. The Braves, by the way, not be on mix radio. Mix 104-1. I think it's a 7 seven ten. I think. 705, 710. It might be different because it's opening day in Atlanta. So, yeah. so sometimes I know they do that parade and stuff, and it kind of pushes things back. I, they didn't ask me to throw out the first pitch this year again. So, you know, we'll – We'll have them on they, they couldn't find tonight. a catcher to handle it, Gary. <laughs> we'll, we'll just stick with that. Yeah. <laughs> one ball, one strike, two men out, two men on right now for the Mustangs. Next pitch is going to be just a little high, I guess, two balls and a strike. And one thing, too, on those balls, they're so close to the zone that you're going to get a lot of hitters still taking cuts at those. Uh, Felipe was able to just be patient right there, but Brew – he, he's all around the zone, even when he's not throwing strikes. He's ground ball, base hit into left field. They're going to send the runner from second. He's going to, oh, it's going to be close. Oh, he's going to be out by a mile, looks yeah, like. He is. And, yep, he, he got is out. Yep. Throw home on Tito Williams, a relay to catch a stop for out number three. So and I tell you what, that was a little bit closer than I thought it was going to be. Bryson felt like he got under that tag, but it, the throw was on the money. So, you're going to get the call when, when the, the catcher has possession of the ball. We're getting the replay right here, Gary. There's a replay coming up. Yeah, when, when the catcher's all over it, he wasn't blocking the plate. Typically, the catcher is going to earn that call there. And uh, tell you what, 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 a, what a game here early. Yep. So, no runs, one hit, no errors, and two men left on base. As we go to the bottom of the second, still one nothing. Mustangs on top of the Bears. Back in one minute here on MixTV.TV. Rick's Plumbing Service, a family-owned business specializing in new commercial and residential plumbing. They can do it all. Rick's Plumbing Service has been in Cleveland for 35 years. Call Jason or Josh at Rick's Plumbing Service, 423-595-6143. That's 595-6143. 
Have you been the victim of drive-by pest control? That's when your pest control company comes to your home with no appointment, treats a little around the outside, and then charges you for it. We know you deserve better. When you do business with us, we will call and set an appointment, we will arrive on time, we will perform a thorough treatment, and if you're not 100% happy, you don't have to pay a penny. So don't put up with drive-by pest control. Call the local guys. We've been serving the greater Chattanooga area since 1970. Call 698-7205 or go to volpest.com. Hardy's Philly cheesesteak favorites are back. Handcrafted creations with sautéed peppers, onions, and melty cheese to reinvent the signature Philly classics from sunrise to supper time. Hardy's, goodness in the making. Luke Keith will lead off of the Bears here in the bottom of the second inning with the Mustangs up one to nothing. It'll be followed by Josh Leak and Hank Adams. Of course, everybody knows Hank is the coach's son as Travis played for his dad here. And then Greg Garen came over and won a state title. Yep. And it'll be leading off, as we said, Luke Keith. Let's see Luke's stats right now. He's hitting 300 for the season with 12 hits, seven RBIs, and seven runs scored. A big, strapping six foot five. I don't know, 240, 250 maybe. I don't know. He's a big kid. Yeah, I asked Gary during the break how tall he was, and he told me 6'5", and he's every bit of 6'5". Yep. Pretty imposing in the box there. Talking to some of his folks this week here at the game, said UTC is going to probably redshirt him, put a lot of weight on him, muscles, here in the coming season. Yeah, they'll get him on a diet plan and, and have him in the weight room more than he realizes probably. 1-0 count on him, by the way, as he leads off the bottom of the second. He'll swing and tip that one this one and one Healthy cut, though. If he gets a hold of one of those, it could be <laughs> some bad news. Yeah, he's hit a long ball this year. I believe he's got one of the Bears. Homers. They've only hit three. Yes, he's got one of those. One one pitch on his way. Foul back. One and two. Yeah, Gary, you're talking about Hank Hank Adams coming up here. I believe he's due third up this inning, but the the tradition of baseball in our community, specifically between these two schools, going back to Hank's grandfather Joe. And his great grandfather Ace, who yeah. was a warrior buddy. You think that Joe was an emotional kind of player? His dad was. There was no match for him. They're all grit. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And definitely, yeah. when, when you say Bradley baseball, you think the Adams. They uh, th their fingerprints are all over this program. Two-two count coming up. Pitch. Inside's full. Three-two. And on the other side of that at Walker Valley, you know, a, a rich tradition opening in 2001, kind of from the get-go, baseball was kind of the, the front runner athletically for Walker Valley with Coach Mike Turner. Yep. Call strike three. First strike of the night for Cantrell. Yeah, Luke wanted that one. He was thinking that one was a little bit more inside. But, again, we, we go back to talking about the consistency from the umpire uh, you know, when it, when it's close like that, it, it's it's a dangerous game. Looked pretty good there. Yep. Josh Leak stands in now. Josh on the season hitting 300. Let's see what his stats are. He's picked up 12 hits. Yeah, that first pitch called just outside for ball one. Seven runs scored for him. Seven RBIs looks like. Here's the next pitch. Foul back. One and one. Going back to last year, Gary, the, the back and forth between these two teams, uh, this, is, this is game one of the series, but if you think it doesn't mean anything, you're, you're out of your mind because the, these guys went back and forth last year with a, a district title, a region title. The year before that, the same thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, any time they're on the diamond with each other, but both coaching staffs. It may not be a district yep. game, but it sure means a lot. Yeah, it does. It absolutely does. One two count and actually fouls off the last pitch. And he'll step out as Cantrell takes a little bit too long to get the pitch coming. One two count and nobody on base, one away. One out, Brian. That one grounded <laughs> to third, handled. Didn't I don't think he realized. So a little frustration uh, there from, from Josh. Does he think it's a foul ball? I, I think he felt like it hit the front of the plate, and it, it sounded comes Coach dead off out. the bat. So I could see where maybe he felt that way. Here's but the, 
Here's a replay. So fouled it, and it, I think it went off his shin. Yeah, it did. It hit his foot. Looking at that replay, he's pointing to his foot. So Coach Adams is sure talking did. to the umpire, going to see if he can get a challenge over there. You can see it on the replay here. Yep. We do have a replay tonight, folks. And that was such a quick reaction. And he's going to come back. Yeah, so they're, they they get it right. And our benefit is we get to sit here and watch this replay and see it actually happen. So Good job, guys, on the cameras there. Well, here's the replay again if you're watching it live with us. Yep, right off his foot. You know, Coach he, Anderson out here now talking to the, the he, home plate umpire to, to see what the, the reasoning for the overturning is. Of course, these guys don't have the luxury we do of seeing the replay. Josh immediately, even in the batter's box, he started pointing his foot as yeah. soon as he it, took It was a swing. pretty quick reaction. So the count is one ball and two strikes. One man out. Leak stands back in there. Now he's the first baseman, by the way. Where's number 28 for the Bears? Another big strapping kid there. One-two pitch. Uh, check swing, bouncer to third, picks it up. Had a little trouble getting out of his glove, but he will throw, and he's safe. He dropped the ball. Yeah, so the tag wow. was applied. He was not able to hang on to the ball uh, over there for Walker Valley at first base. I think that's going to have to be a hit. Isn't yeah, that it? was Keller Stancil. Came off the, the – the throw pulled Keller off the bag. Then he did apply the tag, but the ball came out as he applied the tag. So – that's where the safe call comes from. You kind of see it here on the replay. Uh, Keller tried to he initially call him out. Then we seen the ball come out yep. and call him safe. There's guys doing guys doing some great work on the replays here. They sure are. This brings up Hank Hamza, shortstop. We was talking about. Gary's having to remind me, pat me. Hey, look over here. <laughs> <laughs> We're not used to <laughs> That's this. It. Yeah, Hank Adams. Listen, man. He uh, what a great kid. I've watched Hank grow up. 368 on the season for him so far. He's got 14 hits, 10 runs scored, six RBIs for the shortstop of the Bears. Sure-handed shortstop with a run on first now with one away. And he will lay down, try to lay out a bunt, and they say he went for it, so it's going to be a strike. Yeah, that okay. one pretty high up in the zone. I think if he had that one to do over again, he's going to pull that bat back. But, uh, yeah, Hank Adams, great kid. Leak leading off first base with a short lead, three or four steps. Trying to figure out the pitcher. And here's a ball popped up on the in foul territory to the first baseman. He'll make an easy play for out number two. And that'll bring up Tegan Cassida, number six. He plays right field for the Bears. Plays a really good, strong right field. So two away now, runner first. Josh is not a candidate to steal a base. <laughs> So let's see what Tegan did. Tegan's had some big hits for the Bears this year. He was hitting in the nine hole early in the season. Moved him up to the seven hole now. Everyone has their job in the order is what you're trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> He'll take the first pitch high for ball one. How many pitches is Cooper at? Got him at 28. Okay. 25. Excuse me, 25. Trying to get through. Had 12 in the first inning. Yeah, this – Bottom of the second inning here. Next pitch low, it's ball two. On deck for the Bears, Jonathan Alomar, the center fielder, if Tegan should reach. Probably the most butchered name in the Bradley lineup. Everybody calls him Casada. The visiting teams do, and Tegan Ca is not a common first name either. Cassada, right? Yes. High pop-up, it's back out of play over us. Two balls and strike. I even called him by Tim the other night rather than Tegan. <laughs> His mom reminded me of that earlier today. So he'll stand in now with two balls to strike the count. Two men out, runner at first base. That is Josh Leak, who got a second chance on the foul ball off his foot and laced a single to third there. 2-1 pitch coming from Cantrell. Cooper. Ball strike two. Yeah, Cooper really is looking comfortable out on the mound for Walker Valley yes, tonight. He He's not rushing. He's much like Brew, just – Taking his time, getting the call. There's something to be said for pitchers at this age not getting ahead of themselves, just being able to be patient and deliver the next pitch. 2-2 two -two pitch, foul off again to the right. Uh, it's going to be out of play. First base will take a look, but it is. Well, it's inside the fence, but it's a foul ball. Falls harmlessly to the turf. Now, Gary, you, you can tell me this if I'm remembering correctly, but where the bullpen is – 
uh, on the home side here for Bradley. That used to be closed in. Was a bullpen not on the outside of the fence originally? Years ago. I'm thinking years oh, man, ago. Man, I don't remember. I don't remember. It, I feel like there's a little bit more foul area over there than there used to be. And I, I'm going back. I'm getting old, so. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we off? <laughs> Which is a good thing, though. Next pitch is high and away. It's going to be a full count now to Cassida. With a run at first, he'll be going on the pitch with a 3-2 count and two away. Obviously, some very nice field renovations have taken place up here. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Big pitch. We're Big pitch right there. No runs. A hit, no errors, and one man left on base. After two complete, one nothing Mustangs here on MixTV.TV. We're returning 60 seconds. <laughs> When most people think of plumbing and electrical supply houses, there's an idea that they're just for plumbers or electricians or builders to shop at. Wholesale Supply is proud to be open to the public and proud to serve our communities. By supplying the best quality products for the best prices with the best service guaranteed, Wholesale Supply is your one-stop shop for everything plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. To find a location near you, visit wholesalesupply.us for more. Helping build communities in the Southeast for over 80 years is just what we do. This is John Davis, the trade-in man for Kia Cleveland on South Lee Highway, and we will overpay for your old car today. High mileage, cosmetic issues, that's okay. Rusted, busted, can't be trusted, all trade-ins are welcome. Just bring us your old car as is. Don't even wash it. You'll be shocked of how much I'm willing to pay for your old car in any condition. Come see me, John Davis, the trade-in man for Kia Cleveland on South Lee Highway in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee, where selling your car is as easy as one, two, three. Back here in the top of the third, got a, a bit of a pitcher's deal going. The Mustangs up one nothing. That run came in the first, and they picked up three hits. The Bears right now are no runs and no hits. Well, they have the one hit. We give Jason Leak the credit for that hit, that last inning. Yeah, Connor Phillips coming up to to lead off the inning for the Mustangs. He had a single in the first. Wearing number one. Big Connor wearing number one. One thing Gary and I, Gary and I were just talking about during the break is just facilities and uh, – Really, we live in a great community that supports athletics and seeing the, the upgrades to the facilities here at Bradley and, of course, up at Walker Valley. Bradley's got a new scoreboard coming, you were telling me. Walker Valley got one last year. Uh, that just goes to show you how much this community pours into athletics and the, the kids, the athletes participating. And we had both schools get artificial turf on football two seasons ago now. Played a season and a half. Well, no, two seasons only, I guess. It'll be a ball in the dirt to Connor Phillips for the first pitch of the top of the third with the Mustangs up one nothing. Big left hand. He's got that Bob Horner hair. Remember Bob Horner? Oh, yeah. He used to oh, bleach yeah. hair blonde. <laughs> Those young folks won't remember who Bob Horner was. but That's when Ted Turner on the Braves. <laughs> he was a man of his own. Yeah, uh, him and Del Murphy and Glenn Hubbard, they were on some – some rough Braves teams, but those those three guys were pretty consistent. Hubbard's one of my very favorite players of all time at second base. I love old Hubbard. He was scrappy. Hubby. A little bit before my time, but those guys, uh, being the the baseball fanatic that I am, I, I know a lot about them. It's all Dale Murphy Day talking about. He's got a complete line down there at the battery in their uh, souvenir shop now. Have you ever been to his restaurant down there? No, I haven't. Boy, it's, it's on my it's list. It's awesome. Though. It's awesome. Good Next food. call strike is one and two now. Be Phillips followed by Stansel and then Pledge. Yeah, Connor just getting on top of that one foul. Yeah, and I talked earlier about Connor's role on last year's team. He was more of an arm. Uh, you'd see him come in defensively some. Uh, this year, full time outfielder. When he's on the mound, he's swinging the bat. And uh, he, you can tell he's starting to get comfortable in that role. Uh, I think at the beginning of the season, uh, at the plate, he was attacking, 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 trying to make the, the big hit. And you're kind of seeing that patience settle in for him now. It's a lefty against lefty now. One-two count on its way. Swung on and missed. Catch going to have to throw him out at first. Stop, picks it up, fires to first to retire the runner. One away. Let's see, that's going to be the first strike out of the night. Now it's Keller Stansel now coming up for the Mustangs. Playing first base. He reached on there the last time. And he'll take a pitch outside for ball one. Yeah, Brew wanted that one as he kind of leaned in a little bit after that 
no strike call. And, and as we were talking earlier, Gary, Alex is all all around the zone. He When he misses, it's not a bad miss. And he gets the call that time and he's the count at one and one. I was trying to remember the old Brace pitching coach uh, when the Brace is good Leo, with Leo. Leo, Leo, Leo Mazzoni. Mazzoni. Yeah. Here's a high fly to left field. Tito and the other chase. Adams over there, and he's going to have it. And just in fair territory, looks like. So yeah. out number two. Yeah, Keller just got under that one right down the line there from the Mustang dugout. Leo used to say, I don't care how fast you can throw the ball. Tell me what pitch you can throw for a strike. For strike one. I want to, see, I want to strike, strike one. Tell me what you can do. I don't care how fast you can throw it. It doesn't matter. And here's Michael. Let's see. He grounded out to second his last time. No, excuse me. He, he was hit by a pitch and got on the – Put out down second base. Story that I had heard, I, I'll give you the edited version here about Greg Maddox. Uh, they had – Leo Mazzoni had Better all the edited. young – Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Had all the young pitchers watching Smoltz and Maddox and Glavin and Avery and all those guys do their work uh, during spring training. And uh, he told me, he said, you guys be quiet and just sit here and watch Mad Dog pitch. And Maddox was throwing and throwing and throwing and – these guys were afraid to talk, and he turns around once he was done for the day and said, do you know why I make $17 million a year? <laughs> because I can put this baseball wherever I want to. And, again, he wasn't the flamethrower of that group. No, but not he, at he, all. But he absolutely could paint. He would put the baseball wherever he wanted to put it. Next pitch outside three and one. Something else he would do, he would remember facing you a year later. He remember, I got him out on this pitch. And hit Ted's catcher. I'm going to use this pitch to get him out again this time. Yep. I'll make him pop up. I mean, he is amazing. And that, speaking of pop ups, just foul back. It's a full count now. Three balls and two strikes. Yeah, pledge the designated hitter, taking a big hack at that one. Pushing it, as Gary said, to a full count. Two men out, nobody on base for the Mustangs. Top of the third, still one nothing. Here's a shot, and that's a base hit. Straight away center field for the DH. That's going to be the fourth hit of the night for the Mustangs. Yeah, that's going to be Pledge's 10th hit of the season. And he'll be down at first base two away and brings up now Satchel Cole. Reached on Phil's choice his first time at bat. So we've got a teammate at first, but they are two away. He'll take a high pitch for ball one. Pledge being aggressive over there. Pledge, Pledge a pretty big boy himself. On deck now is Hayden Harrison, if he should reach. Keep the inning alive. The Mustang's still up one nothing. They got that in the top of the first. And here's a call strike right down the middle. One and one. You're listening on MixTV.TV. Coming to you live here from Bradley Central High School. One-one pitch from Brew. Swung on the ground right back to Brew. And he'll take a nice, easy Sunday hop and throw him out at first for out number three. For the Mustangs, no runs, one hit, no errors, one man left on base. At two and a half, one nothing Mustangs over the Bears. We'll return here on Mix TV TV in just 60 seconds for inning number three for the Bears. Choosing the right health care plan for you and your family can be overwhelming. Direct Primary Care Associates' new pharmacy benefits is the best choice for you and your family. With personalized attention, convenient telemedicine options, and free generic medications, Direct Primary Care Associates Pharmacy Benefits offers everything you need to keep you and your family healthy and happy. Say goodbye to long wait times, rushed appointments, and unexpected medical bills. Visit our website to learn more about how Direct Primary Care Associates can provide the best health care experience for you and your family. Direct Primary Care Associates, affordable health care for all. Paula, tell us about how you came to shop at Chattanooga Auto Square. Well, I was introduced to it from my husband. He purchased his first Range Rover years ago. And then occasionally I'd start asking him if I could start driving it. I would confidently recommend them. I mean, they make you feel like family from the moment you arrive. Being in real estate for over like 34 years, you really come to value and appreciate the level of service that Range Rover gives you. Chattanooga Auto Square Luxury lives here. We'll go to the bottom of the third here on MixTV.TV. The Bears have Jonathan Alomar, the center fielder, and the number eight hitter. Bob Batito Williams, the left fielder, and then we'll top the order with Alex Brew, the pitcher. And neither bullpen is active whatsoever, so they assume that Cantrell and Brew will keep on pitching. Cantrell on the mound for his third goal round. Yeah, rightfully so, the way Cantrell and Brew are both throwing the ball tonight. 
no reason to they're, – they're not laboring. They're not doing too much. They're kind of cruising along here. Good and warmed up. Yep. Gotten loose here and as Alomar stands in there. Which we'd heard some rumblings that Bradley might go to the pin a little bit quicker tonight, but with Alex throwing the way he is, there's, that's not necessary right now. Alomar hitting 240 on the season. 11 runs scored, three RBIs for the Bears. Let's see, he has – I don't have their walks. I didn't print all of that out today. He'll take a high ball one. And now outside for ball two. Bears would love to get a leadoff runner on with Alomar and his speed. See if we can move him around, tie the game up. It's one nothing Mustangs here in the bottom of the third. Bears just the one hit. And there's a call striker right down the middle for two and one. Yeah, one thing that I like seeing from Cooper, him being able to go command from the outside, coming back inside. That one's a little bit high. Three and one to count now. Trying to get him to climb the ladder there with that one. Three one pitch on its way. High and away. Ball force. The Bears have a leadoff man on here. And that's going to be the third walk of the game. Cooper's only got two strikeouts up to this point, but commanding the the ball very well tonight, but letting that – I believe that's his – yeah, that is. That's his first walk of the game. His defense has helped him quite now, a bit. Now for the uh, Bears, going to be Tito Williams, who's hot and cold hitter. When he's hot, he is red hot, and he has ripped some big hits for the Bears this year. Of course, he's going to Northwestern on a football scholarship with a 4.0 GPA. I had that, but I had to add two or three years together. <laughs> that's you know. it. That's right. Yeah, if you're going to Northwestern academically, you're, you're doing some stuff right. <laughs> he's hitting 261 on the season, seven RBIs, nine runs scored. And that's in the nine hole, which is not the easiest place to get RBIs. So he's got Alomar at first base with pretty good speed, getting a short lead. Let's see if they're going to. Try to move him. No, throw to first. He got him picked off. If they can run him down, throw down to first. They got him trapped. They're going to run back to first. Pitcher covering first now. And he's going to be going. <laughs> we'll just let you watch it on TV here, folks. Yeah, this, this pickle's working and here. He's and he's going to be out. Got him. Got him caught stealing there. Yeah, that's one thing going back to the start of that play. Jordan Smith at catcher for Walker Valley is not afraid to throw behind the runner. He's got such a strong arm. Uh, I, I don't know how many people he's thrown out at second this year, but this kid, we talk about a worker. We, t you know, I've kind of said what his consistencies and his, his intangibles are. He has got such a strong arm, uh, and that's a, something he's obviously worked on, but that's a, that's a, a God-given arm right there too. And I don't think that Zalamore got picked off because he's warming up in the bullpen down there right now. So that was a courtesy okay. runner there, I guess, or a pinch runner. And it's going to be a three-ball no-strike count to Tito Williams. So Cantrell's having trouble finding a plate here in the bottom, top of the, or see, bottom of the third. It's where we're at, I guess, bottom of the third. Yeah, Jordan, catcher for the Mustangs, just a junior as well. That's one thing that I can tell from last year to this year, just his confidence to make that throw. Uh, that's something he might have pump faked it last year and shown that he was thinking throwing back behind the runner, but he's not afraid to let it loose this year. You've, you've seen him really take off. 3-1 count on Tito. It's going to be low in the dirt, and he'll walk. It's a second straight walk, but the last one got picked off. Second walk of the night. Trying down to first is Tito, and now we flip the scorecard. Alex Brew, who's on the mound still, may not be coming out to fourth inning. He's ground out to shortstop his first at bat. The catch is going to go out and have a little chat with the pitcher. Walker has nobody warming up. Just give him a time to catch his breath. While he's walked two straight batters here. Yeah, Cooper kind of cruising along those first two innings and letting a, a couple Bears get on base. Of course, that, that pickle helped him <coughs> out a little bit with Jordan throwing behind the runner there. But Jordan... Again, now kind of turning into a vet. Last year, he probably doesn't go out and have that conversation unless he's told to. Uh, went out and tried to calm things down with Cooper right there. First pitch on his way to Alex Brew from Cantrell. He squares the bunt, throw down to first, and it's going to be a ball, and he's back safely at first base. 
So they're thinking the Bears are going to try to get somebody in scoring position, which is what I'd be thinking right now too. Yeah, that's one thing Coach Adams, uh, he, he's done for years. He, he's, he's a master of finding ways to advance runners without hits taking place. He, he's good at that. Throw to first. He's back easily on his belly. Which makes for exciting baseball when you have an arm like Jordan Smith behind the plate. Yep. Counts one on right now with one out. Tito Williams at first base. Gets a short lead. Takes another baby step out there. 1-0 pitch. High and tight. It's two balls and no strikes. If Alex is going to bunt him over, he's going to have to have a low pitch down around the waist or so. Typically to bunt it. Help himself here is what he's looking to do right now. He's still the pitcher of record at this point. He'll square, and there's a pitch into the dirt. A pass ball will send Tito down to second base. And count goes to three balls and no strikes. So Cantrell with a runner on, probably worried about him too much, which pitchers seem to do sometimes. Yeah, Bruce showed bunt there, and as soon as he showed bunt, you kind of saw the Jordan trying to adjust to get ready to throw down the second, and that's when that – that pass ball took place there. Alomar looks like he's warmed up in the Braves Bears bullpen. Not the Braves, but the Bears. And here's high for ball four. So there's three straight walks now in this inning for Cantrell. So down at first base would go Brew with good speed. Tito Williams at second. This brings up second baseman Jackson Hummel, who flew out to center field his first at bat back in the first. Two on with one out now. Speaking of Braves, Gary, they're trailing the, the Diamondbacks three to one right now. Oh man! But uh, but Ozuna, they're still in the first inning, so Ozuna oh. responded, I believe, with a home run, putting that run on the board for the, he the Bravos. Got power, buddy. He sure does. First pitch is foul back by Humble. Braves have a powerful lineup. I'll tell you that much, buddy. There's not a weak hitter in that lineup. Arguably the, the best lineup in Major League Baseball. Uh, I know Dodgers fans like to say what they they would like with Otani being added to that lineup, which that's pretty crazy. Next pitch taken outside on a little curveball, one ball, one strike. But you've got a guy who's a a number four overall draft pick hitting in the eight hole for you yeah. for the Braves. So Bristol on deck for the Bears here with Humble at the plate. Two men on for the Bears, one ball, one strike, one out. Cantrell's pitch. Low and in the dirt, good block that time. Yeah. It's two balls and a strike. Yeah, those those base runners were ready to take off there. Jordan did a good job getting down, keeping it in front of his chest. To me, a catcher is one, maybe the second most valuable pitcher, player behind the pitcher in the game because so much is dependent upon how he can play. The next pitch down the middle for two balls and two strikes. Yeah, that was a big pitch there. For Cooper, working his way back to an even count after, uh, as, you, as you said, Gary, he's walked three in a row Here after kind of cruising the first two innings. Comes coach out now, talk. He comes to the umpire first uh, rather than just walking the mound. As he, and he, he pointed his back. Is uh, Cooper having some kind of issues with his back muscles? He, he may be, I, I think. Yeah, he's twisting and turning now, so that's why he went to the umpire first, not to count as an official visit to check on an injury possibility. Yeah, Coach Anderson saw something, and, and Cooper is kind of stretching around out there a little change. bit. I believe he's signaling maybe for another. Might be telling someone to get up and get ready, I believe is what he's doing. Yeah, I believe that's what he's doing. Now they're going to let him throw a couple of pitches, see if he's okay. Uh, he's grimacing when he's yep. throwing now. I don't think he's going to stay. I'm trying to see if I can get a number for who is up in the pen. That might be Cooper Henry for Walker Valley. I'm not quite sure. But, yeah, they're going to they're gonna call that uh, for Cooper Cantrell. Yeah, he's out of the game. So, uh, with that, it being an injury, that will allow uh, the next Mustang pitcher as much time as he needs to warm up and get ready since he was not up. So, we're, we're going to have a little extended time here to maybe get some com commercials in and talk a little bit. Yep. Yeah, let's take a break here on MixTV.TV. Is it gonna, who was it coming in from the bullpen down there? I have not got a number yet. I think it might be Cooper Henry. I, let's see as he's walking in here. We'll check that out for you when we return here on MixTV.TV. We're in the bottom of the third inning. The Bears have two men on with one away, a 2-2 two -two count on the batter, which is going to be, you know, Jackson Humble. And we'll have another pitching change here, or the first pitching change for the Mustangs. We return here on MixTV.TV. Back in, let's take a 90-second break here. 
Thank you. Thank you. Peyton Southeastern in Cleveland is hiring case selectors. Starting pay at $19 an hour. Earning potential up to $23 an hour plus incentive pay. Additional $2 an hour night shift premium. And you're eligible to earn a $3,000 stay bonus. Flexible schedules and great benefits at Peyton Southeastern in Cleveland. They have open interviews Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 9 to 11 a.m. and from 1 to 3 p.m. Apply online at jobs.com. Kroger.com to work at Peyton Southeastern in Cleveland. When most people think of plumbing and electrical supply houses, there's an idea that they're just for plumbers or electricians or builders to shop at. Wholesale Supply is proud to be open to the public and proud to serve our communities. By supplying the best quality products for the best prices with the best service guaranteed, Wholesale Supply is your one-stop shop for everything plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. To find a location near you, visit wholesalesupply.us for more. Helping build communities in the Southeast for over 80 years is just what we do. Welcome to Mountain View Nissan Country, where automotive excellence is our top priority. At Mountain View Nissan, we take pride in offering you the finest selection of vehicles, perfectly suited for your adventurous spirit. From powerful SUVs ready to conquer any terrain to your everyday gas-friendly commuters, we have the perfect vehicle to match your lifestyle. This is Mountain View Nissan Country, where automotive dreams become reality. Visit one of our three locations in Dalton, Chattanooga, and Cleveland today. And let us take your driving experience to new peaks. Rick's Plumbing Service, a family-owned business specializing in new commercial and residential plumbing. They can do it all. Rick's Plumbing Service has been in Cleveland for 35 years. Call Jason or Josh at Rick's Plumbing Service, 423-595-6143. That's 595-6143. And now standing in for the Bears with a count of two balls and two strikes, one out. Facing Michael Pledge is Jason Humble. Yeah, Michael Pledge was DHing, so he's going to continue to DH, I'm assuming, and now pitching. His first pitch is going to be taken for call strike three. So he comes in on one pitch and gets a big, big out number two here against the Bears. Yeah, Pledge comes in after Cooper Cantrell. Really, we kind of cruised through those first two innings and then walked three batters in a row and seemed to be, I believe it was his hip, Gary, from what we were told. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could tell that while he was, you know, walking those guys, he kind of was laboring a little bit, and and then it got pretty obvious there after that third walk. Spain Bristol steps in the DH. He flew out to center field his first at bat. So two on and two out now for the Bears, who trail one to nothing here bottom of third. And he'll take a call strike on a breaking ball. 0-1 count now. On deck, if he should reach Luke Keith, who was called out on strikes, his first at bat. So Michael Pledge relieving Cooper Cantrell, who looks back to second base. Tito's still back there. And he'll come home with a pitch. It's going to be low and away for one ball, one strike. Boy, it's tough coming in on a cool, cool night like this with two men on. And uh, he warmed up pretty quick too, considering not not yeah. being in the bullpen. Yeah, but look, you could tell he seems to be pretty comfortable. And he was DHing, he wasn't playing a position. Yeah. in the field either. So it's one ball, one strike now, two away. Now, that's one thing about this Mustang baseball team is they they have a lot of arms. They've got a lot of kids capable uh, coming in to the to the game out of the bullpen. Bristol gets a call on the outside pitch. It's one ball and two strikes now. So the pressure's on Bristol as Cantrell gets the call. But it's it's never an ideal situation, like you said, Gary. When you're sitting and hey, you got to go in <laughs> yeah. mentally for sure. You're given plenty of time to actually deliver your warm up pitches, but mentally you got to be able to flip that switch pretty quick. Big situation for the Bears here, and here's a ground ball right back to Pledge. You knock it down, underhand to first base for out number three. For the Bears, no runs, no hits. There were no errors, and two men left on base after three complete, one nothing. Mustangs over the Bears. Back in one minute here on MixTV.TV, sponsored by Wholesale Supply Group. Have you been the victim of drive-by pest control? That's when your pest control company comes to your home with no appointment, treats a little around the outside, and then charges you for it. We know you deserve better. When you do business with us, we will call and set an appointment. We will arrive on time. We will perform a thorough treatment. And if you're not 100% happy, you don't have to pay a penny. So don't put up with drive-by pest control. Call the local guys. We've been serving the greater Chattanooga area since 1970. Call 698-7205 or go to volpest.com. 
Hardy's Philly cheesesteak favorites are back. Handcrafted creations with sauteed peppers, onions, and melty cheese to reinvent the signature Philly classics from sunrise to supper time. Hardy's goodness in the making. We have a pitching change with theirs now here on MixTV.TV. Jonathan Alamore, number 13, will be on the mound relieving Alex Brew. Let's see, Brew goes three innings, gives up the four hits, one run, and he walked two and struck out one. So my question to you, Gary, did they put Brew in place of Alomar in center field? I'm sure they did. Okay. Yeah, lefty out there. That's Alomar. I mean, uh, Brew. They just flip-flop positions for That's them. It. Making it easy on us. Yeah. We won't complain about that. We like that. <laughs> so pitching here in the top of the fourth with a score one nothing. by the way. The Mustang's still on top. Put Alomar on the mound. And in center field will be Alex Brew. Mentioned earlier, he's going to go and play for his dad, Mark Brew, at Lee University, one of our great sponsors here for local sports. And he'll face 8 9 and 1 leading off Hayden Harrison, Jordan Smith, and Carson Minix in the top of the fourth inning. Yeah, Coach Brew's done a phenomenal job with the Lee University baseball program, able to witness a lot of that. During my time at Okoe Middle, those guys are consistent about their work, and he runs a tight ship over there. And I know a lot of local players that have went to play for Coach Brew at Lee have absolutely loved their experience. Harrison one for three, grounded back to the pitcher's first at bat. He's 0 for 1. Yeah, Mark's one of the coaches that, and they say he went for it for strike one, that will, uh, he gets the local talent. If it's there to be gotten, he'll try to get it at least. Got three or four Bradley kids over right, right now playing. Dylan Stanford just tearing it up. Riley Black doing a good job. Next pitch is foul back. It's 0-2 count. He's tried to bunt his way on. Yeah, Hayden really likes to try to lay down those bunts. And now down 0-2. He's going to have to swing the bat here. Getting a little cooler as the sun's gone down. Starting to feel that breeze blow in here, aren't we? Yeah. And he'll swing and miss for strikeout number one and out number one here in the top of the fourth inning. So now coming up for the Mustangs, number six, Jordan Smith. The Mustang catcher had a walk in the second inning in his first plate appearance. <clears throat> and he'll take a ball one on the first pitch to him. Alomar's got some movement. Yeah, he's, he's a pretty good pitcher. Obviously, you want to have that a little bit closer to the plate, but there's some good break on that ball. Next pitch, ground ball into right field for a base hit, and he'll stop at first base right there. Alomar coming in with a record of 2-0, and oh, ERA of 1.27. So that's going to bring up Carson Minix for the Mustangs back to the top of the order. And, Gary, just to kind of point this out, the whole first part of this season, it feels like those hits right there were going right at somebody. We're starting to finally see these ground balls find some gaps. And uh, that's the progression of a young season. Mm -hmm. when, when you're making contact, you're eventually going to find the gaps. You're, you're going to start to get some consistency there. First pitch to Carson Minix will be a call strike one. Curtis will run at first base. That, uh, who was the runner we had before? He's out there again, yeah, number that, 10. So number 10 is Bryson Kent, the junior. Bryson, another one of those guys that's capable coming on the pitch. Oh. Might see him pitch a little bit tonight, potentially. Oh, one pitch is called a ball. The umpires to stands disagreed with the call. 1-1 one, one, the count with one man out and one man on and a one nothing score. Aces are wild. Alomar looks in, winds, cranks it outside and low, two balls a strike. Yeah, he's definitely got that sweep going. If he can kind of figure out his placement with that pitch, that's one that's – if you get it close to the zone, it's hard to lay off of. He'll check the run at first. Got a very short lead. He'll come high and inside. It goes to three balls a strike now on Minix with Braxton Smith on deck for the Mustangs. Minix tonight is 0 for 2 with a ground out and a fly out. His pitch. High and tight. It's going to walk him for the first walk by Alomar. Buzzed the, uh, the tower with that one there. Yes, little chin music sort of. Here is Braxton Smith, and Braxton's not as singled. 
and also walk, so he is one for one officially. Now Braxton hitting 408 coming into tonight's game. Runners now first and second. Leads the team with eight extra base hits and 13 walks. Again, very patient at the plate. Sees one right there that he likes, though. Fly ball to right field. It's going to be an easy out number two, and the runner will advance to third base with two away now. So a runner's on the corners, and that's going to bring up Castellanos, the shortstop, who has uh, one for two with a single his last at bat. And this is – sorry to cut you off there, Gary. This no. is another situation for Walker Valley throughout this, this young season. We've seen guys get on base via walk, via little blue pit, when we're able to find those gaps, which seemed rarely early. Uh, but another problem has been being able to push those guys across the plate once they're in the scoring position. And, uh, of course, been in a lot of one-run games, two-run games, and you're, this is where you're looking to improve if you're Coach Anderson's squad. Big play coming up or a big situation for both teams here. Fake to third and fake to first. You can't do it in the majors anymore. It's a balk. So a two on and two out here, a one nothing score. It's an important Situation for both teams. They're to fly foul out to right field. 0-1 count now on Castellanos with Phillips on deck for the Mustangs. Yeah, center field here, here at Bradley's on the fence says 370, but it seems like it looks a lot deeper than that, doesn't it? It's a long hit, buddy, to yeah, get it, it out there. Fake to third again. No throw to, no fake to first this time. 0-1 count. Bears. Cool. Go ahead. Of course, that 23 hanging on the fence out there in honor of Coach Joe Adams. And next pitch is going to be low for one ball, one strike. Yeah, we lost Joe uh, probably a little over a year ago, I guess it was. And he, I know he was making as many games as he could. Yes, there he came to a lot of them right up to the end. One ball, one strike. Fake the third. Brad expects him to run to second. They're going to try to pick him off. We'd be out number three if they can. But, boy, that's a dangerous situation to rely on to record that third out too, though. Yeah, him not throwing the ball there's. And here's a ground ball. A good block by Stott that time. It'll go two balls and strike. Yeah, him holding on to the ball when he does that. He's trying to keep those runners honest, keep him close, because he doesn't want them venturing off too far. But at the same time, you want to keep your main priority in mind that you've got to deliver the pitch. Don't get let those base runners mess with what you're trying to do. Next pitch is going to be high for ball three. So he's in possibility going to load the base with a walk here. It would, would load him, but there's two away. He struck out his first batter and gave up a single, then a walk, and then got the fly ball to right. And runner is going. Here's a ground ball to short. Adams has it, throw across the mound, and he's got him for out number three. What a gun. For the Mustangs, no runs, one hit, and no errors, and two men left on base. one nothing Mustangs. We go to the bottom of the fourth here on MixedTV.TV. We'll be back in one minute. When most people think of plumbing and electrical supply houses, there's an idea that they're just for plumbers or electricians or builders to shop at. Wholesale Supply is proud to be open to the public and proud to serve our communities. By supplying the best quality products for the best prices with the best service guaranteed, Wholesale Supply is your one-stop shop for everything plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. To find a location near you, visit WholesaleSupply.us for more. Helping build communities in the Southeast for over 80 years is just what we do. This is John Davis, the trade-in man for Kia Cleveland on South Lee Highway, and we will overpay for your old car today. High mileage, cosmetic issues, that's okay. Rusted, busted, can't be trusted, all trade-ins are welcome. Just bring us your old car as is. Don't even wash it. You'll be shocked of how much I'm willing to pay for your old car in any condition. Come see me, John Davis, the trade-in man for Kia Cleveland on South Lee Highway in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee, where selling your car is as easy as one, two, three. We go to the bottom of the fourth here on MixTV.TV. Michael Pledge will stay on the mound for the Bears, and he'll face Luke Keith lead off the bottom of the fourth. Jason, uh, Josh Lee to follow, and Hank Adams. The Mustangs still leading one to nothing. Bears just that one hit. Mustangs have one around five hits. Bears, have, each team has committed an error. That's Michael Pledge. Let's see, he came in, and let's see, he threw only five pitches to get out of that last miss. And the first pitch he threw was a call strike. 
And standing in now, big Luke Keith. Luke tonight. Let's see what Luke's done. He's only been up one time, and he struck out on call strike three for the Bears. Yeah, he struck out in the second inning there. And as I said earlier, Luke is a imposing figure. Gary says he's about six foot five. He might even be a little bit bigger. But he took a couple healthy cuts in that at bat earlier that kind of scares you if you can get a hold of one of those. Well, you're one pitch away from a tie game, the way you look at it here in a one nothing game. And here's a ground ball into the hole deep to short. Throw across, going to be in time for a great play that time. What a great glove by Felipe Castellanos at shortstop for the Mustangs. Backhanded, was patient, let the ball come to him, and delivered a perfect throw over to first. Josh Leak, who was called out his last bat on a what looked to be a ball in play, but it's fouled it off his foot. So he is, and he come back in single, so he's one for one. He'll take the first pitch outside for ball one. Gary, I got to remember that, uh, of course, there's some people listening to us on the radio, I believe, but we've got this TV monitor over here, and, <laughs> yeah. I, and I'm breaking it down like we're on the radio. That's okay. The 1-0 uh, pitch is outside for ball two. Those old habits die hard, don't they? I know. It's hard <laughs> to switch between radio and TV. 2-0 count now, so Keith is ahead in the count. Pledges the next pitch. It's going to be call strike. 2-1. and one. Look low, according to the fans. Yeah, hearing, hearing the Bear fans <laughs> over there. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Still one nothing Mustangs. That came to the top of the first. Seemed like a long time ago. The next pitch swung on miss. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, good off-speed pitch there from Pledge. Hank Adams on deck for the Bears. Two-two pitch coming from Pledge. Call strike three. So that was a good frame job by Jordan Smith there at catcher, really earning that call. That was one that if he doesn't. Do that, you may you may not get that call, but it's it's close enough that when a catcher can do a good job behind the plate selling it, you're probably going to get the call. And here's Hank Adams. He fouled out to the first baseman, his first at bat. He is 0 for 1. Nobody on for the Bears. Bottom of the fourth here. Bears had a tremendous scoring week this week. Three game sweep over Howard. Outscored Howard 45 to nothing in three games played. 13 nothing doubleheader sweep here in both games on Monday, and then a 19 nothing game on Wednesday. Next pitch, call strike one, so we're even up at one ball and strike. Yeah, on cool, Adams. cool little stat here is uh, Howard. They've got their first ever Division One baseball player on that team going to, I believe, Mississippi Valley State. I believe that's where he's going. One ball, one strike, two out. Next pitch just outside, two balls a strike. It's been neat over the past few years to kind of see the progression of that baseball team. We were talking pregame uh, about their facilities down there and how good of a job Coach Johnson has done with that Howard baseball program. Call strike two. We're even at two balls and two strikes with two men out. Nobody on for the Bears. If Hank reaches, Tegan Cassidy would be the next batter for the Bears. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch, though. Grounder into the hole at second. Good pickup, up, it, and he's going to be safe at first base. A good hustle there by Hank Adams, legging that one out there over there at second base. Carson Minnix trying to get a handle on it. Couldn't quite do it. Uh, if he's able to corral that early, he might get that out there, but that's, that's why exactly why you hustle right there. Look at Hank Adams here. He's digging in. That's why you hustle right there. Yep, he easily beat the throw there. Give him a base hit on the infield hit. And that'll bring up for the Bears, Tegan Casta, who struck out swinging his first at bat. And with uh, Hank at first, Bears down to run. I don't know what kind of play you might call here. They take a ball outside. Well, we're, we're on cue here. We've pretty much mirrored what we've done each of the, the first two innings here. Mm -hmm. Bradley went one, two, three in the first four batters in the second, and uh, wrapping it around potentially could do it again here if the Mustangs can get an out. And it, it's funny because Bradley's done the same thing to the Mustang order. Michael plays next picks outside for ball two. It's 2 old count now with two men out, one man on for the Bears. Adams gets a short lead. Pledge eyeballing him over there at first base. 
Just a very short lead. He's not going anywhere this time. The next pitch is going to be called strike one, two balls and a strike. You listen to Mixed TV, Dot TV, here from the campus of Brad Central High School's Toby McKenzie Baseball Complex. Gary Oman, Andy Morris bringing you the action here tonight. And we'll look at the schedule coming up, too, for both teams here in just a moment. we get a chance next inning, I think. Let you know what's going to be happening. Next pitch is going to be just hmm. – yeah, Michael. Good from here. Michael wanted that pitch, but uh, that that works it to a three-one count. Let's see why? And uh, he he's got to dig back in there and try to make one more pitch here. Maybe maybe get a ground ball, get a force out at second. Hank still with a very short lead at first. Next pitch high and away. So two men are on now. Mm -hmm. So he'll move down to second. And that will be the first walk from Pledge. As Cassidy will reach on the wall. And Alomar is now pitching with the Bears. Let's see, he walked his first at bat, so he officially does not have an at bat yet. Two men on with two men out now for the Bears. Alomar, right hand hitter against the right handed pitcher. The first pitch home is call strike on that outside pitch. Yeah, that one sweeping off the plate there. Says he caught the caught the outside corner. Tito Williams on deck for the Bears. They keep the inning alive here with Alomar. Good scoring opportunity for the Bears who trail it one nothing here, bottom of the fourth. And Alomar calls time, steps out of the batter's box. He said again to go. Pledge with a call, the pitch. Another call good pitch right two. there on the outside part of the plate. Michael's attacking there. That's where he feels like he can work to get that call. 0-2, Kent. Now on Alomar. Big situation here again for Pledge. Yeah, if you're Pledge right here, you don't want to leave anything over the plate. You, you're looking for a couple pitches here, some chase, some chase pitches. Catcher set up way outside, and here comes the pitch. It is way outside for ball one. Yeah, sometimes you get a batter thinking, and they'll swing at anything. Yep. And, and, and the art of this situation here, you want to make it close enough to get him to chase, but you don't want to leave anything <laughs> over for him to crush. No, that's the chance you take. Neither bullpen has any activity going on. Alomar came on to pitch for the Bears at the plate right now. The one-two pitch. From pledge, it's high and outside, two and two. So you're you're basically burning some pitches there when you're not getting them close to the zone. Uh, when a, a batter's able to step out there, just want to try to make a competitive pitch here with a two-two count. He's thrown 20 pitches this inning. Takes a long look in. He's got runners. They're using a, a sign. The catcher has to use a different kind of sign to signal pitches. Now here's the pitch. That's that Call pitch right strike there. three, so he gets out of it. For the Bears, no runs. There was one hit, no errors, and two men left on base. After four complete, one nothing. The Mustangs over the Bears here on MixedTV.TV, where games are brought to you by Wholesale Supply Group. We'll return in just one minute. Choosing the right health care plan for you and your family can be overwhelming. Direct Primary Care Associates' new pharmacy benefits is the best choice for you and your family. With personalized attention, convenient telemedicine options, and free generic medications, Direct Primary Care Associates Pharmacy Benefits offers everything you need to keep you and your family healthy and happy. Say goodbye to long wait times, rushed appointments, and unexpected medical bills. Visit our website to learn more about how Direct Primary Care Associates can provide the best health care experience for you and your family. Direct Primary Care Associates, affordable health care for all. Paula, tell us about how you came to shop at Chattanooga Auto Square. Well, I was introduced to it from my husband. He purchased his first Range Rover years ago. And then occasionally I'd start asking him if I could start driving it. I would confidently recommend them. I mean, they make you feel like family from the moment you arrive. Being in real estate for like 34 years, you really come to value and appreciate the level of service that Range Rover gives you. Chattanooga Auto Square Luxury lives here. Back here at Bradish, Alaska, inning number five, still one nothing Bears. Jonathan Alomar was down the 
bump for the Bears and an update on the brace. 3 1 Diamondbacks. That's in the bottom of the third with the brace coming to bat. Trailing yep. at 3 to 1. The brace bats, they'll give them some time. They'll get hot down there. Yep. Back back home finally after a terrible road trip to start the season. <laughs> Weather wise. Oh, it was horrible. absolutely horrible. Phillips Stansel and Pledge do up for the Bears, for the Mustangs here in the top of the fifth inning. Yeah, not great weather tonight, but nothing to complain too much about. It's a little bit chillier than you'd like it to be for a baseball game. That, that weather in Chicago, it was they had snow flares in the forecast that last year. <laughs> Here's a shot and a base hit into right field for Phillips. Yeah, Connor Phillips. Putting one just out of the reach there. His second hit of the night. Of Humble. And, and that's one thing that if you're a Mustang baseball fan, that's going to make you feel good seeing Connor get comfortable, be patient, and, and not just trying to crush the ball. Keller Stansel in here. Now let's see. He has uh, reached on an error. Ground out short or popped to short. He is 0 for 2 on the game. Got a teammate first. He squares the bunt, lays it down. A good bunt back to the pitcher. He's going to throw him out to first. Good sacrifice there. Moves the runner second base. Yeah, Fielder's choice there. Keller Stansel doing his job, advancing the runner. Phillips to second. And, and that, that's big when you can do that to start an inning. You're, you're making the pitcher worry about that base runner. Let's see Michael Pledge can help us if He's the pitcher on the mound now. Came in relief of Cooper Cantrell. And let's see, he has singled and been hit by pitch. So he's one for one, been on both base both times. He'll foul the first pitch back over us here for strike one. Yes, yeah, this being a 1-0 game, Gary, uh, as, as a Walker Valley fan, and it's a, kind of a traumatic situation considering how the first part of the season's went. You want to get more than a one-run lead. Yeah, the Bears have scored a lot of runs early on some games and late in others. Yeah. Better calls time, steps out, pledge does. Walker Valley on the other side of that. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I believe it's five of our losses have been by one run. And we've had the lead, and I think, I don't want to start throwing out false stats here. I'm going to check because I wrote this down somewhere. But, yeah, five, five of our losses are by one run or less, and seven of 11 of our losses we had the lead. Wow. So, that – that just kind of goes to show you how the first part of the season's went. Uh, calling the spade a spade, it's been tough, but you, you want to be optimistic. And there's a swinging strikeout against Pledge. He'll throw to first to retire the runner. So there's two away now. And, and you want to hope you can get those things corrected so you can start pushing those runners in from third base and giving yourself a little bit of cushion instead of, instead of having a battle with a one-run lead. It brings up uh, Satchel Cole. Is 0 for 2. That's a baseball name, isn't it? Satchel yes, Cole. Yeah. Either that or a race car driver. <laughs> First pitch to him, and here's a runner stealing third, and he will make it, and he'll throw it away, and he's going to score on the throw away by the catch of that time. So it's 2 nothing as Phillips comes around to score. He stole third base. They threw down, tried to get him. He had a pretty good shot at getting him, but the throw was behind and outside. And here comes Travis Abs to the mound. Yeah, Connor Phillips stole third base there, forced a, a poor throw, and was able to score on that. Uh, Connor Phillips is a, is a big kid, but he is deceptively fast. Uh, one thing uh, that I've been able to, to witness with Connor, uh, knowing him for years now, watching him uh, not only as a baseball player, as a football player, and back in his wrestling days as well, is he, he's a competitor. He hustles. He, he's got one gear, and it's 100% all the time. And uh, Coach Aikens told him, had told me that on the football field sometimes he'd have to say, hey, you got to chill out when the play's on the <laughs> other side and, and you're not going to be involved. You know, bring it down a notch a little bit. But he, he plays with his hair on fire, and you saw that uh, right here with his base running as well. Yep, they gambled and paid off for him. They lead it now two to nothing here in the top of the fifth inning. The count is one ball and no strike. On Cole, he'll stand back in now. Yeah, and this is the part of the order, too, where Walker Valley's trying to trying to find some consistency. You've got Jordan Smith down there in the nine spot, who's it, really you could hit him pretty much anywhere in the order. But you're looking right here at seven and eight between Satchel and Hayden. Uh, if those guys can get on base and turn the lineup over, uh, you're going to see a little bit more offensive output. Next pitch is swung on miss, one ball, one strike with Hayden Harrison on deck for the Mustangs. 
Alomar's next pitch. Right down the middle, one ball and two strikes. So the run comes in on the error by the catcher on the throw down, trying to get the runner at third as he was attempting to steal, which was successful. And he come on home. And here's a pop inside the fence. Looks like, yeah, we'll have a play at first base for out number three for the Mustangs. No, one hit. Yeah, one run on one hit. One bridle error and nobody left on base. Two nothing Mustangs go to the bottom of the field. Peyton Southeastern in Cleveland is hiring case selectors. Starting pay at $19 an hour. Earning potential up to $23 an hour plus incentive pay. Additional $2 an hour night shift premium. And you're eligible to earn a $3,000 stay bonus. Flexible schedules and great benefits at Peyton Southeastern in Cleveland. They have open interviews Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 9 to 11 a.m. and from 1 to 3 p.m. Apply online at jobs.kroger.com to work at Peyton Southeastern in Cleveland. When most people think of plumbing and electrical supply houses, there's an idea that they're just for plumbers or electricians or builders to shop at. Wholesale Supply is proud to be open to the public and proud to serve our communities. By supplying the best quality products for the best prices with the best service guaranteed, Wholesale Supply is your one-stop shop for everything plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. To find a location near you, visit wholesalesupply.us for more helping build communities in the Southeast for over 80 years is just what we do. Back here on MixTV.TV, just talk to Andy. That was a huge run right there in a one-run game. So one run at the top of the first. We go scoreless to that point, top of the field. The Mustangs get a run on a hit, stolen base, and an error. Yeah, that, him to score. that aggressive running by Connor Phillips and – and a throw that wasn't completely out of reach, but one that's just in the chaos. Uh, Connor sliding in there down in the dirt uh, just creates a tough situation for the third baseman to try to corral that one. And Connor's able on that error, able to come in and score. So uh, Mustangs with a two-run lead, as you said, Gary, as now it looks like they've got Tito leading off for Bradley. He walked his first time at bat. As we said earlier, he's going to Northwestern University up in uh, Evansville, up Illinois, I believe, on a football scholarship. And when you've got an athlete like Tito uh, hitting ninth in your order, that kind of tells you a little bit about Bra the, the, the Braves, the Bears lineup. He'll take a pitch for strike one. We'll flip the scorecard with Brew and Humble coming up next for the Bears. In the bottom of the fifth, getting late for the Bears here. And that was inside, I guess, for a 1-1. One, one. One, one pitch. Outside we go to 2-1 count. Bears will be back in action next week. They'll be playing a district matchup with Udawal at Udawal on Monday, back here on Tuesday, and Udawal on Thursday. As this year, it's a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday format with only three teams, three opponents in the district. 3-1 count now, by the way, on Tito, leading off the bottom of the field. Braves would uh, Bears would love to get him on base here. we got the Braves on our mind, yeah, don't we? Yeah, we do. 3-1 pitch. It's going to be swung on and fouled at the plate. Goes full at 3-2. and two. Yeah, and on the other side, Walker Valley, tough series next week against McMinn County. On the eighth, hosting McMinn up at... Mike Turner Field. Then on Tuesday, they travel to McMinn. Then back at Walker Valley against McMinn before facing Knox West April 12th. And that's that's a tough four-game stretch right there. High fly ball down the line at Rice. Going to be chased down and caught in foul territory. Yes, for the right fielder. So a good play to open the bottom of the fifth for the Mustang defense. And that'll bring up top of the order now, Alex Brew, who has walked and grounded his shorts. He is 0 for 1. And sure enough, that was Connor Phillips once again using that hustle to get into foul, te foul territory, excuse me, to make that, that catch. Alex Brew, the lefty, stands in. He started the game for the Bears on the mound, and he'll take call strike one. To fall behind the count. On deck now is Jackson Humble for the Bears. The second sacker. Fledge will go outside this time. Try to give you a chase. It does not succeed. It's one ball and one strike on the Bear. 
center fielder right now, Alex Brew. Yeah, up to this point, it's been a very well-pitched game on both sides for Bradley and Walker Valley both, but uh, Cooper Cantrell exited after two and a third with what appeared to be a hip injury, but was kind of cruising through those first two innings and then walked three in a row in the third, and that's where Pledge came into this game, and he's been able to settle in pretty well. One-two pitch, fouled off at the plate. Count remains at one and two. Brazier down four to two to Arizona, top of the fourth with the Diamondbacks still batting. In Atlanta, the home opener for a sellout crowd at the battery, at Truist Park with the battery outside the field there. One, two pitch on its way. High, it's two and two. Gary, have you been able to go down to Truist yet and check it out? I have not. I've been trying to and just haven't had a chance. It, it is unbelievable. Not just the stadium itself, but the, the whole battery area. Uh, it's it's being replicated across Major League Baseball, yeah. even even college athletics. That you, you know they've said uh, somebody was brilliant in that planning. There. Yeah, University of Tennessee is trying to replicate that up there. It sounds like. And here is a pitch, close play there at first. First baseman of the pitcher for time out number two now. Pledge did a good job getting over there to cover. But, yeah, University of Tennessee plan, is planning on doing a similar – they call it a mixed-use development. Uh, you're seeing uh, the Chattanooga Lookouts in their new stadium. They've talked about doing the same thing there. Mm -hmm. uh, they've kind of – were at the forefront of those facilities and showing that you can make a lot of money when you do it. Well – Fulton County is probably wondering why they don't still have it in Fulton County. It's yeah. In, uh, well, uh, great. It's Cobb neat, County now. Yeah, a neat thing is Georgia State is at Old Turner Field now, and they're planning to do something similar uh, down there with the Atlanta Falcons. It was just announced in that area. They're going to do a mixed-use development. <laughs> so they lose the Braves in downtown Atlanta, so they figure they're going to copy the success and get Mercedes-Benz Stadium and – that whole area where there's a, a lot going on outside. So fans can enjoy the experience the entire day, not just while they're at the game. Yep. It's more than a ball game now. Two will pitch. Grounded foul, two and one. We got two away here in the bottom of the fifth. Bears nobody on. They're trailing two to nothing now to the run in the top of the fifth by the Mustangs. And the Mustang has shut down the Bears tonight with just two hits. Throw that ball out. They got fouled off. Put a new ball in play. <coughs> On deck for the Bears, maybe, if he gets the bat, will be Spain Bristol. The Bear DH. Yeah, Spain's a dangerous hitter. Hitting in that three-hole spot. 2-1 pitch on his way. It's high for ball three. But, yeah, if you haven't been, for sure, anyone watching, listening, that, that whole area down there is amazing and uh, the atmosphere for a baseball game, it's every, every home game during the regular season almost feels like a playoff game because the place is packed out. Ball four, so Humble will reach and Bristol will bat. And that's what we're talking about. Spain's a dangerous hitter, and he's got a guy on base uh, very easily with a mistake could tie this game up. Yep. Second walk of the game for Michael Pledge. Bristol that, stands in. He's 0 for 2 with a fly out to center and a ground or back to the pitcher. And I'm sure that's exactly what Jordan's relaying to, to pledge there. Just, hey, no mistakes over the plate. Yeah, you got the heart of the hitting order for the Bears coming up here. Long look in by pledge. Checks the runner at first. Going to bring it home. Going to be high. Ball one. Which you, you do want to be careful here, but you don't want to be too careful because you got Luke Keith coming up behind Spain. Yeah. Both of those guys are fully capable of changing a ball game with one swing of the bat. 1-0 count as a fly. Going to drop in for a base hit for the Bears in left field. So they're going to have two on with Keith coming to the plate. He just reached out and stroked that and looked like he didn't even swing real hard, but that will advance the runner to second. Give the Bears just their third hit of the night. Yeah, Spain did a good job just dropped that one right in front of Hayden Harrison there. Just enough to advance the runner and get on base. And when you got a guy like Luke Keith behind you, you did your job when you do that. Luke 0 for 2 with a call strike 3 and a grounder to short. He's 0 for 2 tonight. 
He can change this game quickly with a swing of his bat, though. There's two away here in the bottom of the fifth for the Bears. And he swings, takes a big swing, and misses his strike one. Yeah, that's a, that's a filthy pitch, too, from, from Pledge. Just don't want to leave anything like that hanging. Humble at second, Bristol at first for the Bears. They've reached on a walk and a single. Mustangs have been able to dance out of some trouble here in the last couple of innings with runners on for the Bears. There's a swing and a miss strike, too, on Big Keith. Yeah, Pledge doing a great job of heading the count, challenging him there with that fastball after the off-speed pitch. Josh Leak on deck for the Bears. Makes it, makes it harder to catch up with that. 0-2 count right now on Luke Keith. He will call time to step out of the batter's box. He's back in, ready to go now. 0-2 count, two men on, two men out. Bottom of the sixth, two-nothing game, Mustangs. Bottom of the fifth, excuse me, bottom of the fifth. Played set, looks back, fires home. It's high for ball one. Yeah, he's definitely showing Luke Keith the, the respect, not trying to challenge him with anything, trying to make him chase. As you're ahead in the count, you, you, you should do. One, two count right now on Keith. Pledge set. Brings it home. And a shot into the left field. It's a base hit for the Bears. are going to send Hummel home. And here's a long throw. It's going to be in there easily. And runs it first, second with a run in for the Bears. Yeah, and that right there is why you don't want to leave anything over the plate against Luke Keith. But a good job by left fielder Hayden Harrison getting it in, limiting the damage. But the Bears are now on the board. Josh Leak now with 0 for 2. Popped up to third and was caught on strikes his last bat. 0 for 2 tonight. So the Bears are on the board and it's 2 1 game. And Coach Travis Adams is going to call time. Runs at first and second. He's going to talk to the home plate umpire about something. Oh, it's just checking with him. Oh, we got a new batter here. We don't. That's not uh, Josh. This is 18. That's Tyler Cook. Tyler Cook. So, folks, we missed that. Tyler Cook at bat for the Bears here. And looks like he may be the Bear quarterback of the future. We'll see. I guess it's his spot to earn. So, Tyler stands in there. Yeah, Gary and I were talking a little football. Before we went on air today, a lot of people wondering a lot of things between Bradley football and Walker Valley football after the, the great seasons they both had last year, or th this past year, excuse me. You ever think about how lucky we are to be tell, covering them? Tell you what, it was a lot of fun. First pitch, by the way, is ball one. It's a little high. So Tyler stand there, one ball, no strike. Bears have a run in, two men on base. Next pitch is also high. That's going to be the 40th, 50th pitch he's thrown tonight. He might be getting a little tired. Catch going out talk to him again. Yeah, and to kind of give a little preview of that conversation between Gary and I, we, we both feel that, you know, maybe around the state, team's kind of thinking, oh, they lost a bunch between Walker Valley and, and Bradley both. But I know both coaching staffs are pretty excited about what they've got coming back and just kind of, Hearing things, it should be a lot of fun for both teams again next year. Just tee it up and play the game. That's it. Right. That's it. Catcher's back behind the plate now. That's a two-ball, no-strike count on Tyler Cook. With Bears at first, excuse me, Bears at first and second. One run in here in the bottom of the fifth. Two-one our score, Mustangs. Pledge set to go again. He's really slowed down the process here with runners on. And he'll get a call strike on the outside corner. It goes to two balls and one strike. Yeah, that's, that's a big strike right there for Pledge. Hank Adams on deck for the Bears. If uh, Cook can keep it alive. And the pitch will not come this time. So he'll step off the rubber. Look to second. Will not throw back. Throw home this time. High fly into center, and this should be out number three, and it will be for the Mustangs. But the Bears pick up one run on two hits. 
or one air, uh, one hit, no errors, and two men left on base. Two to one now. Our scores. We go to the top of the six with the Mustangs on top of the Bears here on Mixed TV. TV. We'll return in 60 seconds. Welcome to Mountain View Nissan Country, where automotive excellence is our top priority. At Mountain View Nissan, we take pride in offering you the finest selection of vehicles, perfectly suited for your adventurous spirit. From powerful SUVs ready to conquer any terrain to your everyday gas-friendly commuters, we have the perfect vehicle to match your lifestyle. This is Mountain View Nissan Country, where automotive dreams become reality. Visit one of our three locations in Dalton, Chattanooga, and Cleveland today and let us take your driving experience to new peaks. Rick's Plumbing Service, a family-owned business specializing in new commercial and residential plumbing. They can do it all. Rick's Plumbing Service has been in Cleveland for 35 years. Call Jason or Josh at Rick's Plumbing Service, 423-595-6143. That's 595-6143. Hardy's Philly cheesesteak favorites are back. Handcrafted creations with sautéed peppers, onions, and melty cheese to reinvent the signature Philly classics from sunrise to supper time. Hardy's, goodness in the making. Back here in the top of the 16, the Bears have a pitching change as Josh Leak will come in to pitch for the Bears. Alomar will step off the bump and go to third base, and Luke Keith will move over from third to first. Yeah, Hayden Harrison's going to lead it off for the Mustangs here. Left fielder for the Mustangs, who ideally a leadoff spot is where he likes to be, as, as we talked about earlier this game. He likes to try to lay down a bunt. He uses speed to get on base. He's over two tonight with a fly to center. Excuse me, he grounded the pitcher and then called out on, or down swinging on strikes. He's over two for the Mustangs. In the eight hole, he'll be followed by George Smith and then top of the order with Carson Minix as a throw down from Stott. Goes to Humble, and we're ready to go for the top of the six. Two one our score now. Bears have come up with four hits, and in there it will be Aiden Harrison. And we felt like we were cruising through those first three innings or so, then it kind of slowed down the past couple innings. Big and time, yeah. Tell you what. Had a lot of runners the last couple of innings here. Here's a high fly to the left field, Tito Williams circling under it. He'll have for an easy pitch. And out on number one, number one pitch. I'll say this, though. I like seeing Hayden be aggressive and swing the bat and get a hold of one there. That, that's something that will hopefully boost his confidence, being able to square one up like that. Jordan Smith, who has walked and single one for one. With one away, nobody on for the Mustangs here. And we'll go to the top of the order after him with Carson Minix, the leadoff hitter for the Mustangs. First pitch, foul back. Foul back. And when you get, when you talk about power from this lineup, that's something that the Mustangs don't have a home run this year, uh, as opposed to last year. You had a, a couple guys, Landon Franklin, Logan Wallace, guys who could provide some power at any given moment. Of course, Landon Franklin now playing at University of Kentucky. Uh, but if there's a guy that can square one up and give the ball a ride, it's Jordan Smith, as you see a big cut from him there. Uh, but the, the Mustang offense has had to kind of transform itself. Yeah, it's it's not the same lineup as last year. One-two count now on Smith, the catcher. And here's a foul back. It'll remain at one and two. Yeah, playing small ball, advancing runners, getting on base, being patient at the plate uh, is is more the M.O. of this lineup for Walker Valley this year. Mustang's got some action in the bullpen, and so do the Bears. Next pitch is going to even it up at two balls and two strikes. That's Brody Castile warming up for the Bears. Here's a shot and a base hit into center field. So a runner on with one away here on the shot right to center. That's his second hit of the night for Jordan. A couple singles for him, and it looks like they're going to bring Bryson Kent on. To, Bryson's getting some uh, some steps in tonight, isn't he? Yeah. So he's going to come on and run for Jordan, who's the catcher, of course. Carson Minnick's at the plate now. Carson Knight has grounded out to the first baseman. Flew out to center and walked. 0 for 2. And with a runner on first base now. And, it's, and there's a pitch. Bounces up there. Ricochets off of Stott's mask or something. Yeah, it sounded like it may even hit him in the chest. I think it hit off his mitt. J just barely nicked it and hit him in the chest and got away from him, allowing Bryson Kent to advance. 
Count was in the uh, – pitch was in the hole. It's one ball, no strike. And here comes Coach Adams out. Not sure what this discussion would be about. Talking to the home plate umpire. Runner advances second on the wild pitch. I can't see who Walker Valley is warming up and Brody Castillo warming up for the Bears. Hard to read that number from here. Set to go again. 1-0 count on Minix. Braxton Smith on deck for the Mustangs. Have a runner at second with one away. The league's pitch is swung on miss. Leaves it up at one ball and strike. Josh came in in relief of Jonathan Alomar, who had been in relief of Alex Brew. Yeah, Leak also had a single in the second inning. Mm -hmm. And there's a pitch, wild pitch. Going to advance the runner to third. And be a two ball, one strike count now. And that's something you know Coach Adams has got to be frustrated. Leak's made some good pitches, but a couple, one going off the chest protector of the catcher, and then that one, wild pitch. Uh, getting Bryson Kent from first to third. Just on those two. Infield in. in two mistakes. now. Everybody in on the grass now. Three balls a strike as the next pitch is high and tight. And the Mustang, this is a huge run if they get him in from third with in the top of six in a 2-1 game. They're leading it by one. Next pitch foul back. It goes full and out three and two. Yeah, Coach Adams is big on fundamental baseball. He, does, he doesn't like wild pitches and pass balls and those kind of things, so. Leak set for a 3-2 pitch. Going to be low, and he will walk him. Going to put runs at first and third now. So Braxton Smith up, had a single in the first, walked in the second, flew out in the fourth inning. But Braxton coming into tonight's game was a 4.08 hitter, 20 hits, led the team, leads the team with eight extra base hits. Also leads the team in walks with 13. Middle end filters at double play depth. First and third on the corners in close. And Smith ready to go for his first pitch here in the top of the sixth. And it's going to be a ball way outside for ball one. Castellanos on deck, the shortstop for the Mustangs. And with one out, if your coach Anderson – you're looking to get that runner at third across the plate. That that extra run is huge, especially a team, as we've talked about, the, the one-run heartaches that they've had up to this point, being able to get another one on the board when you have a couple outs to work with. 2-0 count now on the batter. Next pitch is way outside again, 3-0. Leak having trouble finding the plate right now. Three balls and no strike, the count. He'll call time, call his catcher out there. Runners on the corner with just one out here in the top of the six. A 3-0 count on the batter, Braxton Smith, with Castellanos on deck. But I'm sure that conversation, you've got a bag open. You don't want to force force a pitch here to a good hitter in Braxton Smith. Now the umpire calls time. They're going to put him on yeah. intentionally to load the bases. Yeah, I think that's the right call. Going to bring up Felipe Castellanos for Walker Valley. Felipe Flew out in the first, hit into fielder's choice in the second, had a ground out in the fourth. Uh, Felipe is a 359 hitter. Felipe, that is. So he's one for three on the evening. The sacks are full, one out in a 2 1 game. First pitch going to be a close. Ball. Very close right there. You can tell the umpire kind of thought about calling that one. One zero pitch, low and away. Two and zero. So the Mustangs pick up a single and a walk, and one of them was an intentional walk. Here's a foul pitch, a pitch foul off. Two balls and a strike now. With Phillips on deck for the Mustangs, he's two for three tonight with a run scored. One ball, one strike, one out, and three men on base. Next pitch is high, it's going for three and one. 
Another bad pitch makes it a 3-1 game. Yeah, bases loaded here for Walker Valley. Felipe Castellanos ahead in the count. Pitch a high fly to left field. Tito Williams going to bring this in for out number two. Let's see if they send the run. They will. The throw home will be. It's a good throw. Just not in time. A little bit late, and the run will score. So an RBI for Castellanos will score Jordan Smith. Runner will move up from second to third. That's Minix. And what he So I think they're saying the runner left early. So I think oh. they're going to say that he left early. Oh. I, I was wondering about that if Coach Adams was going to say anything. Let's see if we have a replay on that. Yep. I don't know. Here comes a replay. So Let's what, what you got to like look here. at is when this catch is made and when his foot leaves the bag. Let's see. He's got Coach Ricketts there telling him. I, I mean, oh, I that's don't know. that. On, on the replay, it looked pretty clean. Yeah. But. Wow. So, no run. So, it's still two to one to score then as we go to the bottom of the six with the Bears coming back. No runs. Let's see. They had one hit and two men left on base, I guess. Yeah. The, <laughs> the, the heartache continues for, for Walker Valley with the, the, coast, the close calls there a little bit. Uh, again, it's it's easy for us to watch a monitor and get the call right yeah. and see it. Here's a uh, replay one more time. We're going to give another look at here. Tito and boy, man. it is it looked just clean unfortunate. Yeah, and, and listen, that the speed of the game, that stuff kind of happens. Uh, let's take a break here. We'll come back in bottom half of the sixth year after a one minute break here on Mix TV dot TV. Back in sixty. Have you been the victim of drive-by pest control? That's when your pest control company comes to your home with no appointment, treats a little around the outside, and then charges you for it. We know you deserve better. When you do business with us, we will call and set an appointment. We will arrive on time. We will perform a thorough treatment. And if you're not 100% happy, you don't have to pay a penny. So don't put up with drive-by pest control. Call the local guys. We've been serving the greater Chattanooga area since 1970. Call 698-7205 or go to volpest.com. When most people think of plumbing and electrical supply houses, there's an idea that they're just for plumbers or electricians or builders to shop at. Wholesale Supply is proud to be open to the public and proud to serve our communities. By supplying the best quality products for the best prices with the best service guaranteed, Wholesale Supply is your one-stop shop for everything plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. To find a location near you, visit wholesalesupply.us for more. Helping build communities in the Southeast for over 80 years is just what we do. Adams leading it off. He'll take pitch for ball one. Nick, we're just talking uh, that play there could be a huge factor in the outcome of this game. It's still two to one. Pledge still on the mound for the Mustangs. Count goes two and zero oh on Adams. That's going to be the 54th pitch that I've got for Michael, who came in here relief. He's thrown more pitch than any pitcher tonight for either team. It's working quick here too. Yep. Two zero -oh count. Going to be call strike one. But go, going back to that play, that's where the human element comes into play. And it's it's hard to be perfect. <laughs> it's hard to be spot on, especially uh, that close of a call. And, and I tell you what, you know, I see the purpose of having instant replay in football, but, man, it just takes away from the game. And basketball even now. Especially it's, the timing. Uh, it, it lets things go flat. but Some of them take forever to figure out. Yeah. Two-one count now. Coach Adams – Spoke to us badly. Let's see what he's got in mind. Probably going to take this pitch here on two one count. That's his son he's talking about. And he will take it, but it's call strike two. Yeah, some of these, especially in basketball now, in the last minute of the game, I mean, they just seem to stop it on every single yeah. thing. But anyway. Yeah, it did. It looked like Bryson two left, left in time. Go ahead, Gary. 2-2 two, two count here. He's going to be grounded back over the pitcher's head. He's going to beat it out. He's going to beat it out for us. Infield hit, and they throw it into the dugout, and they may advance him to second. Let's see. Maybe not. Yep, they're yes, they will. Him. He's going to go to second. Say it. So, so give him an infield hit. He'll go to second on the throw. Yeah, they're going to say it's – Nope. Okay, no, he, no, he no, he's changing his call here, it looks yeah. like. Field umpire called and pointed toward the dugout. Then he pointed towards second. Yeah. The parent didn't go in the dugout. 
Walker Valley faithful starting to get on them there a little yep. bit, especially after that call over at third base. And here's the replay. Let's watch it. So I, I bet you he was just trying to call dead ball. In my, I, I didn't. It's hard to tell where the baseball is. Yeah, we didn't have a good angle yeah. on that. But he's at first base with a leadoff single here in the bottom of the sixth. And Cassida, who is 0 for 1 with a strikeout and a walk tonight. With Hank Williams down at first on the infield hit. The second one he's got tonight. And this be a ball outside. Get a little testy out here, a little oh. emotional. Tight ball games, that'll happen. Bottom of the six, two one or score. Bradley, I believe. Had I runners. Everybody's had runners the last yeah. two or three innings apiece. Yeah, and they've they've got a runner with no outs right now. And that's uh that's something that, you know, Coach Adams is a two old count right now. Looking to try to capitalize on, of course. Everybody getting fired up on both sides right now. Two old count. Pledge looks in, looks at the runner, brings it home. Foul back two and one. Good game to have on Mixed TV tonight. Sure is. Appreciate our great sponsors, Wholesale Supply Group, and all the guys making it possible for you to watch this game. Yeah, these uh, the rivalry series. I know going back to football season, it was a lot of fun for us to be able to to have these games on TV for the community, especially when it's weather's not perfect, not ideal. Able to get on YouTube, get on MixedTV.tv, and check out what's going on. Swung on and missed. County was up at 2-2 two and two on Casta with Alomar on deck. Runner at first, Hank Adams, nobody out for the Bears. They trail it 2-1, to one, bottom of the six, getting very late in the game. Two pitch coming. It's high and away. It goes full again. This thing is slow to a crawl after yep, the third sure inning. Sure has. And I've got to be out at the Hot Slaw Festival <laughs> for <laughs> – Mix 104-1 tomorrow. Bears are stranded two runners each the last three innings. Got one on now to lead off the inning. Pitch is going to be call strike three. It's a big so strike three. With his bat on the shoulders, he'll trot back to first base for the second time tonight. Tegan not a fan of that call. Now bring it Alomar, who has walked and been called out on strikes. Number 13, playing third now for the Bears. I don't know if I'd seen it. I, might, I don't know how fast Hank is, but, well, they need to get him at second base somehow, some way. Yeah, with one out looking and to advance a runner, and that's exactly. Be in fair, knocked, into, it's knocked into fair territory. It's going to be out at first. So he gets a sacrifice. Yeah, Jordan touched. So the way that went down, Jordan Smith, the Mustang catcher, touched the ball while it was in fair play, even though it went out. Yep. So that's that was the correct call, but Jordan able to quickly collect himself and make the throw to at least get the out there at first base. So Adams, good, good heads up play. Adams moves down. The second Tito Williams now up for the Bears. He's walked and flew out to right field. And then we'll flip the scorecard if he gets on to Alex Brew. Two away, bottom of the sixth, run down to second base. Pledge looks at the runner, brings it home, and he will take call strike one. Yeah, Pledge being able to find his way in front in the count here. He he's he pitches so much differently when he's ahead in the count. He's you can tell he's so much more comfortable as anyone would be. But it, it's uh, when he's having to work from behind, you can tell he he's not as deliberate with his delivery. Oh, one pitch. Swung on ground into the hole, deep to short. They're not ever going to throw him out. So the Bears get another infield hit and run on the corners. Let's go to the top of the order now. So Tito hits it right where they weren't. Adams advances to third. The tying run now is at third on the single. And Alex Brew, who is 0 for 2 with a walk, steps in. He started the game on the mound for the Bears, moved to his center field position. So we're two away, two on now. Again, we say it's every half inning. It's a big situation of what's going on. And on in a game bases. like this, you wouldn't want it to be any other way. It's one pitch away from anything happening. Pledge steps off the mound, gathering himself. And now time's going to be called by the umpire, the home plate umpire. I think we're set to go again. Alamar, I mean, uh, Pledge back on the mound. 
Brew ready to step in now. And he's at the plate. He would like nothing more. He gave it that one hit in the first. He'd like nothing more to tie the game. And he'll foul it off to the left. I've got players now 67 pitches for the game. He's came in and taken on the workload, that's for sure. He's done a pretty good job. And he's heading the count, no balls and strike to Brew. Jackson Humble on deck if Brew should reach. Runner going from first. Here's a shot, and it's a base hit, and we got a tie game. He goes the opposite field. Runner going to third, and he's going to be there. Brew going to second. So he's got a single and an RBI. And he'll advance to second on the throw as he went the opposite way. And that will bring home Hank Adams, who reached on infield single to open the inning. So here we go with a tie game, and it seems like Walker's had their – taste of those haven't recently. Yeah, it looks like Coach Anderson's going to make a pitching change here as he makes his way to Michael Pledge out on the mound. And you, you got to imagine, I know you got to move on and forget things, but that's, that's got to be eating at him, that, that base runner, getting first, called out at third. First baseman coming over now to uh, toe the rubber, looks like, and see who's that going to be there coming over. So that's going to be Keller Stansel, I believe, coming on the pitch. And they point at him. He's coming over, changing out some gloves here. And he, that's going to be number three. Yep, that's Keller Stansel for the Mustangs. Keller Stansel now pitching for the Mustangs. So the Bears have tied the game here in the bottom of the six. And right now we have two men out. Runners at first, I mean, excuse me, second and third with two men out. A huge clutch two out hit by Alex Brew to tie the game. And while he's warming up, let's take a break here for some of our great sponsors on Mixed TV. TV. We'll be back in 60 seconds. And Stansel starts to warm up for the Mustangs. And a 2-2 game, bottom of six, the Bears still batting. This is John Davis, the trade-in man for Kia Cleveland on South Lee Highway. And we will overpay for your old car today. High mileage, cosmetic issues, that's okay. Rusted, busted, can't be trusted. All trade-ins are welcome. Just bring us your old car as is. Don't even watch it. You'll be shocked of how much I'm willing to pay for your old car in any condition. Come see me, John Davis, the trade-in man for Kia Cleveland on South Lee Highway in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee, where selling your car is as easy as one, two, three. Choosing the right health care plan for you and your family can be overwhelming. Direct Primary Care Associates' new pharmacy benefits is the best choice for you and your family. With personalized attention, convenient telemedicine options, and free generic medications, Direct Primary Care Associates' pharmacy benefits offers everything you need to keep you and your family healthy and happy. Say goodbye to long wait times, rushed appointments, and unexpected medical bills. Visit our website to learn more about how Direct Primary Care Associates can provide the best health care experience for you and your family. Direct Primary Care Associates, affordable health care for all. Paula, tell us about how you came to shop at Chattanooga Auto Square. Well, I was introduced to it from my husband. He purchased his first Range Rover years ago. And then occasionally I'd start asking him if I could start driving it. I would confidently recommend them. I mean, they make you feel like family from the moment you arrive. Being in real estate for over like 34 years, you really come to value and appreciate the level of service that Range Rover gives you. Chattanooga Auto Square Luxury lives here. Jackson almost steps in with runs second and third, one run in for the Bears in a tie game. And Stansel's first pitch to him will be call strike one. Yeah, Keller Stansel on the pitch was playing first base and able to get out ahead 1-0, or excuse me, 0-1 after Bradley doing some damage here in the last two innings. We've got a tie game 2-2, bottom of the sixth. Stance take a long look in. He'll fire it home now. It's going to be outside for ball one and one strike. Bristol on deck for the Bears. He's walked and grounded out and flew out. He is 0 for 2. Bears have rattled with one run here in bottom of the sixth. It's been a fun, fun game here tonight for everybody involved. For it both sure schools, has. Both teams. For us old guys here on MixedTV.TV. Here's a shot right up the middle. It's going to be a base hit. It's going to score one. Is it going to score two? He's going to come home, and he will slide in safely, throw down to second. He is going to be safe at second. It's, and the Bears lead it now with two runs, and making it four to two with Bears on top. Huge hit that time 
for Jackson Humble, right up the middle. Yeah, that's two RBI there for Humble. And that's exactly what I was talking about with the Coach Adams' coach team. He finds ways, his players find ways to get on base, and they advance the runner, uh, be it with, with timely hitting like that or, you know, j just heads up base running. Here's Spain Bristol, the catcher, uh, excuse me, the DH for the Bears. With two men out now, they have scored three runs with two men out in clutch hits by Alex Brew and then by Jackson Humble. Brew plating one, Humble getting them both in then. And Brody Castillo has warmed up and ready to come in for the Bears. He's in the re relief role this year for the Bears. He's bound for Cleveland State. And just speaking here on behalf of the, the Walker Valley fan, the, the Walker Valley viewer, uh, this is kind of more of the same. This is what just about every single game has felt like this year, uh, just scratching and clawing and then something just not going your way, uh, be, it a, be it a call, yeah. Uh, not, not too many of those games where you can kind of sit back with a five, six run lead, uh, especially coming off a series with Cleveland where three games were decided by three runs. Yeah, that's crazy. Right now we've got a one-two count on a foul pitch on Bristol with big Luke Keith waiting on deck. I'm sure he'd like to get another shot at making something happen, but there are two away. The Bears have scored three runs here with two out in the bottom of the six to take a 4-2 lead over the Mustangs. That's where I was able to speak with Coach Anderson today, and he's been just trying to preach resiliency. Listen, we we got to take our punches and keep moving forward and uh, wait for your breaks, kind of create your own breaks. and looking for that one guy to kind of step up and take the lead on shifting that momentum in our favor uh, being at Walker Valley and you know when you face a tough Bradley team like this they're, they're not going to make it easy on you. Two balls two strikes two count two on two three in excuse me just one on right now at second base and here's a shot going the opposite way to right field and that's going to be in there for they're hitting him right, and here comes another run home, finding and he will gaps. score. They're finding gaps right now, and another, it's resulting in runs. Another infield hit for the Bears there, and it's all falling the Bears' way right now. It's coming around to score for the second time tonight is Jackson Humble. So far, four runs alone in this inning for Bradley, completely flipping this game. L Luke Keith. Stands in now. Luke tonight is 0 for 2 with a call strike three. And a grounder. And he'll take call strike one. And he's, saying, he's one for three, actually. He'll take strike one. Bears have four runs here in the bottom of six. Lead at five to two now. The 0-1 pitch grounded to third, picked up at the third baseman, throw across, and he's got him for out number three. But the Bears get four runs. Let's see on one, two, three hits, no errors, and one man left on base. After we go to the top of the seventh, the final go around for the Mustangs. The Bears up now five to three. Peyton Southeastern in Cleveland is hiring case selectors. Starting pay at $19 an hour. Earning potential up to $23 an hour plus incentive pay. Additional $2 an hour night shift premium. And you're eligible to earn a $3,000 stay bonus. Flexible schedules and great benefits at Peyton Southeastern in Cleveland. They have open interviews Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 9 to 11 a.m. and from 1 to 3 p.m. Apply online at job.kroger.com to work at Peyton Southeastern in Cleveland. When most people think of plumbing and electrical supply houses, there's an idea that they're just for plumbers or electricians or builders to shop at. Wholesale Supply is proud to be open to the public and proud to serve our communities. By supplying the best quality products for the best prices with the best service guaranteed, Wholesale Supply is your one-stop shop for everything plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. To find a location near you, visit wholesalesupply.us for more helping build communities in the Southeast for over 80 years is just what we do. Okay, we go to the bottom of the seventh, the last goal round for the Mustangs, who now trail it five to two at the Bears put a four spot on the board in the bottom of the sixth, and Brody Castile, who's the designated closer for the Bears this year, a Cleveland State signee, is on the mound. His big brother, Ryan, is playing in the Braves organization down for the Gwinnett Stripers. Hit a home run this week. 
That's one thing, uh, just to kind of put in per- perspective, I was talking with Coach Mike Turner the other day, a longtime Charleston head baseball coach, Walker Valley head baseball coach, and athletic director at Walker Valley. And we were talking about the talent in our community and how, how rich baseball talent it is. And, and you think about guys like Ryan Castile playing AAA baseball. Ryan Frazier made it to AAA for the Mets from Walker Valley a few years back. And, uh, you know, as good as our talent is, just getting to the bigs, that shows you how tough it actually is. I agree with you 100%. Jason Davis, a, a former Cleveland State player, Charleston pitcher, played for the Indians for a while. And, uh, j- you know, it, it's tough. And it's, uh, it's cool to see a guy like Ryan making a career out of it and still chipping away trying to get a shot. He's going to end up coaching for the Braves. It's a game plan. Now it's 0-2 count on Connor Phillips here, leading off the top of the seventh of the Mustangs. I think baseball is the very hardest sport of any to get to the pros in. And he'll swing and miss. We're out number one as Castile comes in and gets the first guy on a strikeout. And the Bradley Faith are really getting fired up right now. Coming up next is Keller Stansel. Keller is 0 for 2 with a sacrifice. Rightfully so, after a big inning like that, when the bats are finding gaps like that and you're pushing runners across. Uh, Got to get energized a little bit, and they, they sure are. Strike one on the call strike to Stansel. Yeah. Brody can smell it now. The adrenaline's pumping. Here he comes with the next pitch. And they're going to challenge it. Nope, I say it did not go. One ball and strike. Yeah, good check swing that sw- check swing there by Keller. One one pitch, a grounder and past the shortstop for a base hit here in the top of the seventh inning for the Mustangs. Yeah, just out of the reach there of Hank Adams at shortstop for Bradley and getting the Mustangs a base runner trying to get back in this thing here in the seventh inning, trailing five to two. That brings up Michael Pledge, the man who was on the mound and gave up those runs. Michael for the Bear, uh, to the Bears. Michael has a hit tonight. He's single. He is struck out and grounded a second. He is one for three. First pitch to him is going to be low for ball one. With runner at first now, that's going to be Stansel down at first base from the Mustangs who trail at five to two in their last at bat here. In high school, you go seven innings. Castile not really paying much attention to all of the runner. Fires into the dirt. Runners going, advance down, throw down. He is what a throw. safe. What a throw, though. That was so close. Boy, boy, oh, boy. Might, might be a little bit of a courtesy call, makeup call there potentially, but that, that throw was on the money. Uh-huh. But a good good slide there, good effort by the Keller Stansel. Here. We're going to get this replay up here. Guys down in the truck doing an awesome job. It's close, and – uh, he he might have got his hand in there. It's very very close. Wow! What a throw though! Unbelievable throw by by the catcher for the Bears. Stopped. Three old counting on the batter. Runner at second now. One out. The pitch. Oh, ball four. He's walking two men on. Tying run. Coming to the plate now with the Mustangs. Would we have it any other way, Gary? No. <laughs> <laughs> got got to end this one with some excitement. And here comes uh, maybe a pinch hitter. So Satchel Cole was listed, and this is going to be Titus Torbett, number 22. And Titus coming off a huge start against Cleveland a couple games ago. Pitched eight innings in a nine-inning game. Pitched eight of them, ran into pitch count, but only allowed two hits, had 13 strikeouts. They're going to see if he can get it done at the plate now. 5-2 game, Bears up by three. But Mustangs with one out have runs at first and second. Pinch hitter. Titus, is it Titus Torbett? Yeah, Titus Torbett. Titus Torbett, a big lefty, big guy, solidly built, facing Brody Castile. So Brody's running some trouble here in the seventh inning. His first pitch swung and fouled back to the screen here. 0 1 count on the hitter. Of course, you know what he's thinking. I can tie this up with one swing. Yeah, Titus is, is definitely a contact hitter, but has the ability if he can get a hold of one. Colby Stott holds that right there for the umpire to think about, but he still calls it ball one. One ball, one strike, one out, two on. Top of the seventh. Here on MixTV.TV. Castile fires at home. It's going to be high for ball two. Curious to see how hard Castile's throwing. He's pumping them in there. 
Two one count now. Like to get a speed of pitch on that. He's got it right there. Got the old radar gun out up here. That's the leak radar gun. <laughs> Castillo set for a 2-1 pitch. Inside and gets through him. Both runs going to advance to second and third on a wild pitch here. So that gets the tying run and scoring position for Walker Valley. Runners on second and third. And a 2-1 or two one count now on the batter. Well, I got 3-0. Let's oh. see what the count is. See if Blue will get us. Yeah, correct it here. 3-1, yep. what are you saying? Yep, 3-1. Okay, yeah, that's what I got, 3-1, yeah. Here's a 3-1 pitch. It's a load of base on the bad pitch here. The pitch is ball four. The base are loaded with one away here. Here we go, folks. It never gets easy. So it looks like Walker Valley is going to pitch hit once again, bringing on number 21, Tyler Job. The senior utility infielder for Walker Valley. He's going to come on in place of Hayden Harrison. So the wheels are spinning here. The Mustangs have the base is loaded in the top. Here comes a courtesy runner maybe. Let's see what's going to happen. Yeah, courtesy runner coming in. Yeah, so Torbis is, Torbit is going to come out, and that's going to be number, I believe that's Satchel Cole, number 27 for Walker Valley. Okay. And at the plate, it's going to be Tyler Job. Hitting for Hayden Harrison, who was 0 for 3 with, in the 8 hole. So the base are loaded for the Mustangs, who trail by 3 at 5 2, the bottom of the 6th, or top of the 7th, top of the 7th. Yeah, Tyler Job, the 6 2, 200 pound utility infielder for Walker Valley. Another big kid, man. We're growing big around here, don't we? Tell you what. <laughs> so Castile's got his work cut out for him now. He'll step off the rubber. He wants to get a new set of signs. Haven't used the indicator with the runner at second base now. He is set. His pitch home with a wind up is a strike, a swinging strike. A big cut from Job, and that's a tough pitch to hit up in the zone like that coming in. Yeah, that, that one came in at 84 miles an hour. So the old one pitch. Call strike two. Castillo's just rearing back, so here it is. Hit it if you can. Firing at fastball. 0 2 count on the pitch hitter, Job. Jordan Smith on deck for the Mustangs, the nine hole hitter. The 0 2 pitch. Call strike three, two away. Now, Job didn't like that call, but it was close enough to where Castillo is going to get that call. Yeah. That, that's, that's a pitcher's pitch right there. His second strike out of the inning, so with two away, the last hope is the catcher, Jordan Smith, tonight, who has singled twice and walks. He's been on base all three times, two for two with a run scored. And this is the benefit of having a guy like Jordan Smith as your nine-hole hitter. And he will take it low for ball one. Yeah, a lot of coaches like to have a good hitter in the nine hole. It's like two leadoff yep. hitters back-to-back. -back. I know Travis has done that in the past, and his dad Joe did that as well. The 1-0 count with the bases loaded. Two away now, though. The pitch home is Tafer and strike one. Both sides hanging on every pitch. Bears around with four in the bottom of the six after trailing it in the entire game. one nothing after one. It was two to nothing after five. And they scored in the bottom of the fifth with a single run. And four in the bottom of the six to take the lead and make it five to two. They'll be in action at Udawal on Monday. Back here on Tuesday. Udawal on Thursday. And that Boyd began next Friday night. One of the team's first game of the year, they played Boyd and lost that game. Here's a pitch, swung on miss. It's one and two. Yeah, Cass still hanging around 83, 84 miles an hour, pumping those in there. Jordan Smith steps out of the box. He's got to figure out what he can do here on the one. That's a pressure, man. <laughs> That's it is. pressure. You're down three runs. You got three men on. You Both got of these guys. These. Both of these guys, the hitter and the, the pitcher. Yeah. The wind, the pitch. Grounder to short. Adams with it. He will go to second, the short way. Out number three, and the Bears have won it. And a 5 2 score of the final here. Hey, what, what a heck of a baseball game, though. Yeah. It was. I mean, good. both these teams were battling the entire time back and forth. Bradley able to kind of, uh, not kind of, they broke through there in the, the sixth inning and 
completely change the dynamic of the baseball game. Uh, pitching is usually the strong point for this Mustang team and just didn't go right there. It happens, and uh, but you, you got to give all the congratulations to Bradley for their effort for being able to come up with some big hits and Gets the base runners across. The thing about the Bears, when they scored those four, they scored all four runs with two outs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was still a two-to-one game. They were down two-to-one and rallied to win it. That's their eighth consecutive win. They're 10-6 and six now on the year. Walk Bell dropped to 5-12. and 12. The Bears have started the season 0-5 and, and taken nine of their last ten games. Or ten of the last 11, I guess it would be. Improving to 10-6. and six. This is a non-district game, of course, we mentioned early on here on MixTV.TV. Been a fun night. We'll try to see if we can get uh, Coach Adams up here for a quick post game interview if we can. But in the meantime, let's take a time out here. I, I come back and wrap things up for you here on MixTV.TV. The final again, the Bears win it 5 to 2, the score 5 2, the final. The Bears over the Mustangs of Walker Bell. And we'll be back in, let's say, two minutes on MixTV.TV. Welcome to Mountain View Nissan Country, where automotive excellence is our top priority. At Mountain View Nissan, we take pride in offering you the finest selection of vehicles, perfectly suited for your adventurous spirit. From powerful SUVs ready to conquer any terrain to your everyday gas-friendly commuters, we have the perfect vehicle to match your lifestyle. This is Mountain View Nissan Country, where automotive dreams become reality. Visit one of our three locations in Dalton, Chattanooga, and Cleveland today and let us take your driving experience to new peaks. Rick's Plumbing Service, a family-owned business specializing in new commercial and residential plumbing. They can do it all. Rick's Plumbing Service has been in Cleveland for 35 years. Call Jason or Josh at Rick's Plumbing Service, 423-595-6143. That's 595-6143. Hardy's Philly cheesesteak favorites are back. Handcrafted creations with sautéed peppers, onions, and melty cheese to reinvent the signature Philly classics from sunrise to supper time. Hardy's goodness in the making. Have you been the victim of drive-by pest control? That's when your pest control company comes to your home with no appointment, treats a little around the outside, and then charges you for it. We know you deserve better. When you do business with us, we will call and set an appointment. We will arrive on time. We will perform a thorough treatment. And if you're not 100% happy, you don't have to pay a penny. So don't put up with drive-by pest control. Call the local guys. We've been serving the greater Chattanooga area since 1970. Call 698-7205 or go to volpest.com. When most people think of plumbing and electrical supply houses, there's an idea that they're just for plumbers or electricians or builders to shop at. Wholesale Supply is proud to be open to the public and proud to serve our communities. By supplying the best quality products for the best prices with the best service guaranteed, Wholesale Supply is your one-stop shop for everything plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. To find a location near you, visit WholesaleSupply.us for more. Helping build communities in the Southeast for over 80 years is just what we do. This is John Davis, the trading man for Kia Cleveland on South Lee Highway, and we will overpay for your old car today. High mileage, cosmetic issues, that's okay. Rusted, busted, can't be trusted, all trade-ins are welcome. Just bring us your old car as is. Don't even wash it. You'll be shocked of how much I'm willing to pay for your old car in any condition. Come see me, John Davis, the trading man for Kia Cleveland on South Lee Highway in beautiful Cleveland, Tennessee, where selling your car is as easy as one, two, three. Choosing the right health care plan for you and your family can be overwhelming. Direct Primary Care Associates' new pharmacy benefits is the best choice for you and your family. With personalized attention, convenient telemedicine options, and free generic medications, Direct Primary Care Associates' pharmacy benefits offers everything you need to keep you and your family healthy and happy. Say goodbye to long wait times, rushed appointments, and unexpected medical bills. Visit our website to learn more about how Direct Primary Care Associates can provide the best health care experience for you and your family. Direct Primary Care Associates, affordable health care for all. Paula, tell us about how you came to shop at Chattanooga Auto Square. Well, I was introduced to it from my husband. He purchased his first Range Rover years ago. And then occasionally I'd start asking him if I could start driving it. I would confidently recommend them. I mean, they make you feel like family from the moment you arrive. Being in real estate for like 34 years, you really come to value and appreciate the level of service that Range Rover gives you. Chattanooga Auto Square, luxury lives here.
Peyton Southeastern in Cleveland is hiring case selectors. Starting pay at $19 an hour. Earning potential up to $23 an hour plus incentive pay. Additional $2 an hour night shift premium. And you're eligible to earn a $3,000 stay bonus. Flexible schedules and great benefits at Peyton Southeastern in Cleveland. They have open interviews Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 9 to 11 a.m. and from 1 to 3 p.m. Apply online at jobs.kroger.com to work at Peyton Southeastern in Cleveland. When most people think of plumbing and electrical supply houses, there's an idea that they're just for plumbers or electricians or builders to shop at. Wholesale Supply is proud to be open to the public and proud to serve our communities. By supplying the best quality products for the best prices with the best service guaranteed, Wholesale Supply is your one-stop shop for everything plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. To find a location near you, visit wholesalesupply.us for more helping build communities in the Southeast for over 80 years is just what we do. Welcome to Mountain View Nissan Country, where automotive excellence is our top priority. At Mountain View Nissan, we take pride in offering you the finest selection of vehicles, perfectly suited for your adventurous spirit. From powerful SUVs ready to conquer any terrain to your everyday gas-friendly commuters, we have the perfect vehicle to match your lifestyle. This is Mountain View Nissan Country, where automotive dreams become reality. Visit one of our three locations in Dalton, Chattanooga, and Cleveland today and let us take your driving experience to new peaks. Rick's Plumbing Service, a family-owned business specializing in new commercial and residential plumbing. They can do it all. Rick's Plumbing Service has been in Cleveland for 35 years. Call Jason or Josh at Rick's Plumbing Service, 423-595-6143. That's 595-6143. Back here at Brady Center, we've gone final here on MixTV.TV. The Bears went at five runs on eight hits. The Mustangs, three runs on eight hits. The final there, and the Mustangs had the bases loaded there in the seventh inning. And, Andy, uh, it's a fun game to watch. You like, you don't want to have a blowout game either way in a game like this. You want both, because especially an inter-county game here, you want both schools to be anticipating a win and, and hoping for a win. And just sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But a great effort by both teams. Uh, key hits with two outs in the top of the bottom of the sixth inning by Alex Brew to tie the game at 2-2 and then the two uh, runs single by Jackson Humble to knock in two more that give the Bears their lead that uh, Walker just couldn't catch up to but uh, fun fun game here tonight. Yeah Gary you're spot on when you're talking about a rivalry game especially one we're getting to put on TV thanks to Wholesale Supply Group. Yeah. I mean it early on it looked like it was going to be a straight pitcher's duel all the way through and, and then all of a sudden, fifth, sixth inning, you start start seeing the the carousel moving. Yeah. Uh, especially there for Bradley, a big sixth inning, and uh, it just a- everything you want in a rivalry game and uh, a, a game between two programs with the tradition that they have. And obviously, uh, Walker Valley more frustration. A game that you feel like that you, you kind of had control of, you let get away from you. Uh, there, there's areas that you got to try to improve. You got to look at these as teaching moments. You got to learn from them and hope to improve situationally and being able to uh, defensively make one more play. And of course, you know, you, you get a call that goes against you with a base runner uh, leaving early, potentially, as we saw the replay. That that kind of got the, thi- the, the thing going, but you can't let it get out of control after that play. It, and it. It was in the from the third inning on. Maybe it was just every single half inning was somebody had something going on, and everybody kept getting out of it. You know, every pitcher, yep. you know, it'd make a great play somehow. We knew something uh, was bound to happen. Uh, yep. <laughs> and then another key play was when they called the runner at third out on the sacrifice. What we thought was a sacrifice yep. fly. Yep. You know, and replay shows. Eh, maybe it wasn't. Yep. Maybe he was safe. But. Uh, it's interesting to have a great uh, replay here on Mixed TV. We get to see the up close and personal with the great camera work they had tonight. Yeah, shout out to Austin Chadwick and the guys in, in yeah. the, the trailer. State of the art down there, man. That uh, I'm sure they were well fed and warm in that trailer as well. <laughs> it, it ended up getting down into the 40s during the game, which for baseball, that's cold. Put it this way, Austin was well <laughs> fed and warm down there. The other guys were here in the cold with that's us. It. But uh, that's it. great cam work on some clutch plays that they got in there. And here comes Coach hey, Travis you, Adams. You got him up here, Gary. I got him up here. and We're going to we're gonna back up here, and let's put him on the screen here. Travis, put that on our butt. And uh, – we got Coach Adams here in the press box. If you want to flip the cameras back here for Austin, we get a chance. Here we go. Well, Coach Adams, uh, P 
pitcher's deal for like three and a half innings. They had a run at the top of the first. They took a 2 nothing lead. We got one run. Some key clutch hits in the bottom of six from Alex and from uh, Jackson Humble. Some great plays. A great fun game to be involved with and to watch. And here for me and Andy, from coaching point of view, I don't know. Maybe it's a little. <laughs> uh, you know, they controlled the tempo of the game early. Yeah. Um, you know, their pitcher kept us uh, – you know, kind of kept us down, and yes, they pitched uh, we well. almost had to wait them out. And, uh, uh, you know, they had to make a change, you know, and uh, I think the momentum, you know, swayed back our way. We got, you know, those timely hits. And, uh, you know, but hats off, we didn't really hit the panic button. You know, we kind of uh, – we could have closed out those innings without giving up those two runs early. But uh, that's, you know, that's part of it. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's good to get those tests, you know, this time of year. You know, we'll see them – you know, hopefully again, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in in, uh, in region play and, and and things like that. It's a good it's a good lineup, and you know they pitch it they pitch it pretty well. So uh, yes, they did hitters, tonight. Yeah. Hitters got to figure it out. So yeah, very timely hitting for your team there in that sixth inning. Uh, good base running, and I'm, I made the comment during the game. A typical Adams coach team. Uh, <laughs> j- just kind of talk about your players' mentality, not only at the plate but running the bases. Well, the you know the guys that. That do have, you know, they're blessed with speed, you know, especially, you know, Tito and Alex and uh, mm-hmm. Jackson, you know, and Hank can run a little bit. So, uh, they, uh, you know, Alex handles the bat so well. Um, you know, his backside hit right there when Tito went to first and third was, uh, that was, that was, uh, that was key. You know, it sure then, was. Uh, Tied the game. Yeah. And Jackson's, you know, hit was, uh, that was, that was critical, you know, too, to, uh, to extend it. So, I mean that's uh, that's kind of you know where you want them. You want them in that you know those pressure situations uh, again and again and again. And you know and you saw like uh, even in, you know they're in the seventh. You know they they got the bases loaded and you now we got to reset and figure it out. Like you know nothing nothing comes easy. So. Not in these rivalry games. Never no. never does. <laughs> no. But uh, I wanted to talk about Brew a little bit uh, outside of the one run. I mean he he looked in complete control. I can remember watching him in middle school. I mean, that kid's always had such a good approach on the mound, just staying calm, cool, collected. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I believe it was it after the third that you pulled Brew? Right. Uh-huh. So, j- just kind of talk about how he's been for you this year. Uh, consistent. You know, uh, Alex uh, is one of those you don't really have to worry about, you know, his mentals. He, <clears throat> uh, he kind of stays the same. Um, he commands the zone, you know, and, uh, you know, people say, you know, what's the best pitch? I was like, mm, strike one. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he, you know, he battles to get ahead, and then, uh, you know, he's got some secondary pitches that are, that are pretty good, and, uh, you know, he controls the running game, uh, too. So, uh, being left-handed, you know, you know, it's, you know, sometimes people get on first base, but, you know, it doesn't mean, you know, it's going to be a track meet. So, uh, right. they got to pay attention there. Um, he, uh, but, you know, like you said, like, he, he – he has a good pace about him, keeps the defense on their toes because they know strikes are coming. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that's a, that's a key to it. Yeah, de- definitely looked like a pitcher's duel early, but ended up being a fun baseball game. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they're – I mean, we were no hit, you know, for the longest uh, – Yeah. For the longest time. And uh, I think their guy had a, a kind of a back spasm thing, you know, go on. They, you know, he had to come out. And, you know, we were uh, – we kind of set our guys up to – for everybody to get some work in today, you know, going into Monday because we have, uh, you know, districts, uh, district series starting up. So, uh, you know, but, uh, I mean, that's a, you know, hats off to them too. They, they, uh, that's a, that's a pretty tough lineup. And, yes, it is. Uh, and like you said, you know, I mean, you say what you want, you know, they gave themselves a chance, you know, again, again in the seventh, you know, to make a run and tying runs on first base and, you know, things like that. And, uh, Brody did a good job of resetting, uh, and kind of, you know, shutting the door there. They were they were one pitch away from evening the game or even taking the lead there in the seventh inning there. But right, you know. right, yep. So uh, that's uh, Brody's kind of grown into that uh, kind of closer role, you know, for us too. But uh, that's uh, everybody's got to have a, a little bit of a you know different role at times um, when they're called called on in uh, in those games. Well, it was a fun game to broadcast and a big win for the Bears. Congratulations there. That's eight in a row now. Nine out of ten, ten out of nine, ten out of eleven now. After that zero and five start, mm-hmm. what's what's been the big difference? You think in that? Uh, I, I I was told didn't get to go to Florida, but we couldn't catch cold down there. We had errors, you know, getting extra runners Typical, on base. And uh, uh, 
typical, early season. Typical early stuff, you know, and uh, usually there's a reason. If uh, you know, especially if there's a big inning or uh, if their uh, you know scores are getting you know kind of away from us, uh, hitting at that point in the year was was behind. Um, but yeah, our uh, our error totals were, you know, unacceptable. I don't want to say astronomical, yeah, but, but you know there there was a reason. Uh, and the kids, you know, the kids bought into that, you know, and, and, and baseball games are lost a lot more than they're won. And uh, we kind of take the approach uh, to make sure we're, we're not on the losing end of, of that, you know, not on the freebie. Uh, By that, he means he let them know about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, they're aware. They're, uh, you know, they're, they're old enough to know, you know, it uh, doesn't just happen. So, uh, no, I'm proud of them. They're playing, they're playing better. So, uh, I mean, that's uh, – it's always a reset, you know. Mm-hmm. You got teenage guys, you know. That you, you to get them to do things consistently is a battle. So that's just what we're that's just what we're playing. And you got Udawal next week in a three game set uh, there Monday here Tuesday and back there Thursday. I guess weather going to be okay there. And uh, you're uh, you had a three game sweep over Howard in the district, so you're on top of the district right now with Udawal next. And Walker Valley has uh, who do they have uh, coming up? Big series next week with McMahon. Three game series with McMahon. So yeah. a, a tough McMahon team. Yeah. yeah, always tough with McMahon. Very very competitive there. Well, coach, big win tonight. Congratulations on that. And the Bears tip of the hat to them and to Walker Valley. I mean, uh, they had the lead all the way through to the bottom of the sixth. You know, and uh, looked like that they were going to hang on there. But baseball's a strange game. Yeah. Just one little thing can change the entire well, complexion that, of the game. You know, you can't hold the ball. You can't run the clock out. Yep. You got to get the third out. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, that's uh, that's what that's the beauty of it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, we got you know about pretty much at the halfway point right now. So, we're uh, we're hoping to just keep that consistency about us. All right. Well, we'll be back with you. Uh, we'll have another TV game at Walker Valley with the Bears. On the 26th. Valley on the 26th. Yep. So we'll be up there for that game. I think that's a Friday night, if I remember I believe correctly. believe so. And uh, from there, but good luck until then. We'll see you here around Bradley and on the road. And uh, keep those district wins coming. This yeah. was a non-district game tonight, folks. So it was not a district game. But uh, it's an inter-county rival that everybody wants to win. Yes, sir. Yep. Thank you. That's Coach Thank you. Congratulations. Travis Thank you. Fathoms getting the win tonight. The Bears win it 5-3 to three with five runs and eight hits against three runs and eight hits for the Mustangs. We'll take one more break, come back and wrap things up here on MixedTV.TV when we return in just 60 seconds. When most people think of plumbing and electrical supply houses, there's an idea that they're just for plumbers or electricians or builders to shop at. Wholesale Supply is proud to be open to the public and proud to serve our communities. By supplying the best quality products for the best prices with the best service guaranteed, Wholesale Supply is your one-stop shop for everything plumbing, electrical, and HVAC. To find a location near you, visit WholesaleSupply.us for more. Helping build communities in the Southeast for over 80 years is just what we do. Welcome to Mountain View Nissan Country, where automotive excellence is our top priority. At Mountain View Nissan, we take pride in offering you the finest selection of vehicles, perfectly suited for your adventurous spirit. From powerful SUVs ready to conquer any terrain to your everyday gas-friendly commuters, we have the perfect vehicle to match your lifestyle. This is Mountain View Nissan Country, where automotive dreams become reality. Visit one of our three locations in Dalton, Chattanooga, and Cleveland today. And let us take your driving experience to new peaks. Back here at Brad Center, we want to wrap things up here. This has been Andy Morris with Gary Ormby tonight here. Bears win it 5-3, to three and as we said, a non-district game. The Bears are on a roll now with eight, nine, let's see, excuse me, ten wins in their last 11 games and eight of those in a row to improve the record of 10 and 6. The Mustangs tonight, well, as you mentioned, Andy, they had had some issues uh, throughout the year, and some of those seems like you're just snake bit sometimes, and they just you, you can't get over that hump. Absolutely. It's yeah. a mental thing a lot of times. And, and this game is a good representation of kind of what's happened up to this point. Uh, you know, Cooper Cantrell came out pitching a great game. Uh, two and a third till he started having some cramping issues, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, potentially with his lower back or his hip. And, uh, but, again, Michael Pledge able to come on and do a pretty good job. They got to him there late in the sixth inning. And uh, that, that's, you know, it was really a tell of two different games. Uh, a pitcher's duel early, mm-hmm. even with Ple- Pledge coming in. 
and but then they're the last couple innings we just started seeing the the batters start to dominate yeah. really on both sides You're right yep a lot of base runners left on by both teams tonight but the bears win it in a five through three final there for andy morris this is gary Olmis saying so long for now and we hope to see you again soon on mixtv.tv and uh, pass the word when these games are on the air. You can see them around the world wide web because a lot That's of folks it. can't be here in town. They're out somewhere or they have loved ones overseas or wherever, maybe in a service or just in an in a assisted living or something like that. They can tune in here and listen to our broadcast on MixTV.TV. Now, Gary, I've enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. We get it, to do it again. It, yes, we do. On the 26th. Look forward to that. Yep. should be a lot of fun here. We'll say so long for now here on MixTV. And thanks much to Wholesale Supply Group for their continued support and all of our sponsors you saw throughout the show here tonight. Until next time, so long for now.